Good afternoon, everybody, and welcome to Resident Arcade. It is Wednesday night, and we are live. Hi. Hello, everyone. Hello. Hello, everyone. To everyone in chat, as you can see, I've got Lou and Sam with me today. We've got a nice little custom. Is it that way? That way. Nice little custom picture yeah. for Sam, but we have actually got some video for him today, so we'll put that on in a minute. But we thought we'd uh, show show off some of <laughs> Lou's uh, amazing photoshopping going on, <laughs> and I quite like it. To be fair, are those are those Sam's glasses, by the way? They are. Yeah. Yes. yeah. That's my face, just with a bit of green and a big forehead and floppy hair. It looks it looks like there was quite a lot of wind going on when they took that photo. Um, uh, I don't know. Is it the one I've got my profile picture? It is. It yeah, there's, there's a seagull above your head. Yeah, it was. At, yeah, it was. At, it was <laughs> as I live in Cornwall, everywhere's at the seaside. But I was at the seaside at the time. Uh -huh. <laughs> right. So anyway, let's turn Sam on so you can actually see him. Hopefully, his video won't. Uh, you know, there you go. There you go. So today, yes, we're doing a Fallout Four special. We've all, for once, been playing the same game. Normally, we all play quite a lot of different genres and quite a lot of different types of games. So um, today, we've been uh, doing it. And unfortunately, we haven't got Steve with us today. But Steve has been playing it a lot as well. He's at he's, He has been at the seams, hasn't he? He's he's racked up about twenty three to twenty nine hours from my last look on my last um, Steam stalking session that I did. And I, I think I played more than everybody else put together. I have to be honest, but I've been off work, so I've got an excuse to do that. Today's show is going to be a bit of a different format from normal. Um, we normally have, you know, games news and we talk about games that we've played, etc. But we're just going to talk about Fallout Four today. So we're going to start off, and we're going to start off with different topics. So, character creation within Fallout Four. I said, I said, said Fallout Three, didn't I? You did nearly say it, yeah. Oof. Uh, yeah, so character creation, guys. What's your? Yeah. Uh... There's been a meme uh... about where it's, it's something like um, it, like it was a couple of days after Fallout Four came out, and it was like been out for two days. No one's got past character creation yet. Well, Just... it took it took me forty five minutes, and I only realised after I did that and I saved my game that it took me forty five minutes to create my character initially. And the reason <laughs> for that is it's the first game ever that I've actually created myself in a game i normally just create some daft character and just go oh that'll do you know after about five minutes or whatever but i spent 45 minutes getting my cheekbones right getting my beard right and everything else Didn't can we get, get to see this well um th this <laughs> unfortunately this um this video is me doing a completely different one i did, I did a special recording today but um i'll, I'll try and find a, a screenshot of it i think i might have a screenshot somewhere let me uh right. let me have a look I've seen some pretty impressive ones. I've seen um, Hulk Hogan. I've yes. Seen <laughs> my, um, <laughs> my wife pointed that out. She's a wrestling fan, so she uh, she pointed that one out. Yeah, I've seen Barack I saw Bob, saw Bob Ross as well. Yes, I saw Bob Ross. Yeah, that was that was a Photoshop though. That one, the Bob Ross one. Bob Ross. Yeah, the the hair and the uh, beard. I'm pretty sure were photoshopped slightly. Right. Okay. Uh. That's, that's disappointing. I just saw John Cena as well, but I'm pretty sure that was a Photoshop. John Cena! Yeah. Anyway. He's a wrestler. Oh, hello to some people in chat. Uh, Howling Mad Dog Reed. Is he having issues with Super Mutants? Ah, that must be Steve they're talking about. He, he actually, he <laughs> sent, you know, this is the first game for a while. Um, and I'm, we're not we're not going to fanboy this, by the way. It's, it's a good game, but we're not going to, you know, oh, it's amazing. There's, we're going to point out quite a lot of problems that we've had with it, which I'm sure everybody else has had problems with as well. Um, but Steve, yes, if, for those of you who weren't listening to last week's show, the week before or whatever, Steve hated Fallout 3. You think he played about five minutes of him, of it because he just ran into Super Mutants and died tried, instantly. Yeah, he tried to take the Super Mutants out with the cap gun that you start with. You know, the <laughs> thing, he just ran into all of the Super Mutants and shot them with that and realised that nothing like that would actually do anything. Yeah, yep. so I mean, he's uh, he he actually sent me a text, and this is the first. It's actually one of the first games for a long time where I've received texts about the game from everybody in this, in, you know, from Lou, from Sam, and from Steve, while we've been playing it. The last game I remember doing that with is um, Grand Theft Auto Four with Sam, and Sam just yeah. eventually went to me, shut up. <laughs> fucking shut up <laughs> I did not fear I was trying to play you know <laughs> yeah this character by the way is starting to look a bit like Jean Reno well no it changes believe me I, I, I realised when I was doing it I was going right I'm not going to do myself again this is me trying to do myself right now and then I thought you know what bugger it about ten well, about five minutes into it I just just like there this is, this is the woman <laughs> that starts changing <laughs> <laughs> but by the by the end of this character creation it's going to be crazy. That's like every selfie I've ever seen. <laughs> um so what 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 do we think of the character creation then? 
I'm impressed with how much you can do, how co how configurable your faces are. Because the uh, Fallout 3 had a lot of criticism about the fact that all the characters basically looked the same. Like you could pick your um, your race race of your character, and whether you were white, Hispanic, or black, you looked basically the same. There's lots of presets in this, but there's also a lot of configuration within the presets, which I think helps a lot. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, I do both of the characters here as well. The beautiful thing about it as well is, is while I was creating this absolutely hideous character, this is this does turn out horrible. I'll fast forward it if we stop talking about it. But um, I, I, d my wife behind me was just sat there going, oh, "That looks beautiful. What, uh, uh, that's that's my handsome husband or something like." It's, oh, it doesn't matter. What I still you got do. it, honey. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Oh, that's brilliant. There's some. There's. I've seen some footage of people doing horrendously ugly ones where they're like monstrous and it's like oh that's the, that's the man I married oh, this <laughs> uh, let's, um, let's scroll this on a little bit because we, it's, it is laboring things a little so bit some, someone in chat has just said that that guy looks currently looks like the woman behind him is giving him a prostate exam <laughs> he's, he's getting a little bit he's getting a little bit fagin with, with it the bulldog it looks like looks like a UFC fighter at the moment <laughs> What's his name? There's um, there's a guy that he looks just like, and I can't, um, Silver and Anderson Silver and Sil uh, Anderson oh, Silver. Uh, yeah, Anderson Silver. That's his name. <laughs> but yeah, that, no, the creation is very, there's very dynamic. It's got a lot of um, a lot of capabilities. But you know what I realised as well, and I didn't realise this when I did my character originally, was that all of the extras and all of the extra kind of the ad the added stuff, you can apply all of them to him. Whereas in, you know, in, um, in in previous Bethesda games, you could only, like, apply one scar on the face and one oh, scar on the chin. Them Everything. Like, so basically, I've got, by the end of this, I, I didn't realise until just now. <laughs> by the end of this video, the characters have everything. It, it's it's the, the most hideous scene I've seen in my entire life. <laughs> Right, oh, I'll just go scroll it on a little bit. Now, the funny thing is, even though... Hey, now he's looking good. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Um, I, I didn't actually spend that much time doing the character creation, for, just because even though I'd seen a bit of the dialogue thing, I never play these games in third person, and having spent ages creating a character in Skyrim whose face I never saw, yeah. I was like, what's the point? So I picked, I picked the woman... I sort of went, oh, I'll give her like scraggly hair that you'd have if you were wandering around the wasteland. Made her eyes look a bit more like evil, even though I'm playing as a good guy. And kind of went, oh, that'll do. And I wanted to jump into the game, so I didn't spend that much time on it. However, it is a pretty, if anyone who's not played the game, it's this is a very unique character creation system. I've not really seen one implemented quite this way before. <laughs> <laughs> wow, he looks like he's going to cause some damage, doesn't he? <laughs> Look at that nose bridge. Look at that nose bridge. <laughs> start, looking like, start looking like a dwarf. He <laughs> is. He's fucking helping Frodo get to bloody... Um, <laughs> so, so then I started to mess the girl up a little bit while he was stood behind praising her as well. Let's have a quick look. Oh dear. Yeah. Yeah. Oh dear. And this is where I start to realise that you can overlay all of the extras on it. Howling Mad Dog, thank you very much for the compliment. However, <laughs> this is this isn't the one that I created for me. It does look just like me, doesn't it? Yeah. Here we go. That's Come just on. a point actually what Sam just made about the fact that you don't really see your character. I'd never use third person in games which give you the option. No. And I, I did spend a lot more time in Skyrim doing it before realising this, and I didn't spend much time in this. Even yeah. though I think if you did spend a bit of time with a photograph of yourself or whoever you were trying to model, you could probably get them very close to... I did exactly that. I had a photograph of myself on one monitor and I modelled myself on the other. Now, I got almost everything but the lips right on mine and, and my cheap bones are a little bit too um, accent accented. However, I did, um, did realise... Uh, that you that you can you can once you're in the game you can go to a surgeon anyway and get it changed so I'll I'll be doing that and tweaking it and I'll get it just right and then I'll bring it on to the next week. That, definitely. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> now who does she remind you of there by the way that that woman uh, now I, I might as well just tell you the the I was going for. The PlayStation girl on the PlayStation advert, you know, the crazy one with the eyes and the pictures. Oh, yeah, yeah. 
Not now, but she did a little bit earlier on. Anyway, here we go. This is this is where I start realizing. Oh God, you can apply them all. I all buy the things. Every checkbox. Every checkbox ever. It's it's horrendous. The, the, the guy behind her looks just too happy. I, I'm slightly disturbed by his facial expression. <laughs> Yeah, you can just imagine him having that facial expression as he's blowing, like, Super Mutant's heads off into bloody pulps. <laughs> just... There's another thing about my actual character, the one that I've done like me. It does, <laughs> he doesn't look right with a helmet on. Because I've, cause I've, my hair's quite... Spi- I, like, I usually have my hair quite spiky and just doesn't work. Just doesn't Does your hair come, come through the helmet? Uh, no, it doesn't in that instance, but it just comes off and there's no kind of sideburns and the beard's not quite as bushy as mine, so... But here you go. Yeah, this is where it gets really messed up. God, she looks like something from... Um, she looks like a ghoul. The Last of Us like or something. Ghoul, yeah. yeah, actually, yeah. Do people... How do people... Could uh, be have around. you noticed any response to you based on the way your character looks or just on the gender? Uh, no, I haven't just yet. Just the gender so far. But and I not have... that much gender. There's, there's, there's still got the... We'll probably get to the perks and whatnot later. But you still have the gender-specific perks, don't you? Um, but I haven't noticed any other difference, really. Hey, give me a hug. There's my beautiful wife. <laughs> <laughs> and now I decide to do it to him because I realise that you can uh, you can really mess them up. Well, you know what? Like couples look tend to look like each other, don't they? <laughs> I think if she's gonna look like that, then he's gonna have to have some kind of battle scar as well. I just like the fact that it's now layerable, though, because it wasn't before, and that made a... I, I think that, that took away the immersion slightly. Now I know this as well. That means that when I go back <laughs> in and do my character, I can put on my little blemishes and maybe not yeah, as accurate. Yeah, but you all that. And Chris, this, this isn't just displaying your trademark subtlety here, is it? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Trademark indeed. Anyway, right. So, moving on. Shall we move on to the next uh, thing? You can see how n- nasty they get. <laughs> yeah, they do look a bit like corned beef. So, um, one of the things that's been that's been criticised about Fallout Four is the graphics. Yeah, and, the, and a lot of people have said that the graphics are just basically Fallout Three, but slightly nicer. Now, I I totally and utterly disagree with this. Utterly dis. I mean, the lighting is so much nicer than Fallout Three. It's the colours are nicer as well. Fallout Three had a very mono- monotone palette, didn't it? <clears throat> Yeah, I mean... It was very uh, yellow and grey. I I think, again, people... Get, I mean, I, I, I'm not that bothered about graphics in general. I, I could still go off and play Morrowind, for God's sake, you know? Daggerfall, you know, I've been playing 8-bit games, I've been playing indie games, and I still enjoy them. It's the enjoyment, it's not the graphics. But so many people get hung up on this. And does it does it, does it affect you, you guys, when you play a game? Yes um, and no. I, I think with Fallout 4, that what the, the issue is, is that it is a nice looking game. Like, the actual design of it is is brilliant. Um, but it wasn't the other ones as well. What I think is, is that people are negatively comparing it to a couple of other big games that we've already got into a lot of depth about. Namely, The Witcher 3 and Metal Gear Solid 5. Both huge, hugely successful, hugely publicised, massive open world, long, hundreds of hours spent on it kind of games. Both of which essentially look better than Fallout 4 in most most aspects. But Fallout 4 does have a lot of nice things. Like I do think the lighting is really good, and you do have the added the added bonus of like you know people's heads and arms explode and stuff in this game, which is quite cool. Yeah, I mean they're they're, the, they're more the graphical effects, aren't they? But I'm talking about specifically like just the the general look and feel of the game. Now I've got some comparisons here. I'm just gonna I'm just uh, loading them up. And there's also uh, both Kotaku and Polygon have both done some. They've done some nice articles where you can basically use a slider to look between Fallout Three and Fallout Four, um, and and it's it's nice to do the comparisons and have a look at them. But let's have a look at these first. So these are just static images, and sorry, they're uh, they're not the best. But you can see here, mm. this is the one at the bottom's Fallout Four, one at the top's Fallout Three. Now the lighting just there. Just the post effects, the fact that there's some, there's god rays, the fact that there's some nice looking, um, you know, there's, there's nice, well, there's, there's actually decent reflections in this game. There's, it's probably using a PBR system, a, a physically based rendering system. 
the lighting in this game, I've not played a big open world game like this with such good lighting because it isn't just the sun rays that look great. Fire effects, all lights that are in the game look really, the way that the lighting works on, on the scenery and the characters is really good. Uh, the in-camera effects of your character looking into the lights is really good. Uh, weather effects as well. So when the clouds come in or the mist comes in, and the way that affects the sunlight, really good stuff, that. And it's the sort of thing I've not seen in that many open-world games, like, ever. Like, you sort of, you know, a sort of um, Last of Us type directed in a in a specific area game can do that. But this is an open-world game where you can go anywhere at any time. And the lighting effects are consistently really good. It's probably my favourite thing about the look of this game is how lush the lighting feels like it's it feels quite luscious and vibrant and i really like it i mean just look at the difference there between dog meat that's fallout 4 that's fallout 3 you can't say that it's not a lot better it's i think clearly a lot better i think what people's criticism is is that when you compare it to something like the recent re-release of grand theft auto 5 um, or some of the, 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 the Frostbite engine games like Battlefield 4 and things like that, it's not on the same par as them, and that's because this game has probably been in development for a lot longer than those games. And it doesn't matter, and it's much bigger. And it's bigger. an old engine as well. No, it's, it's not it's much Skyrim. bigger, is it? No, you're right, it is. I, it, I'm going to say it's much bigger, but it's not much bigger, is it? It's certainly not bigger than The Witcher 3, for example. No. Um... um I think a lot of the complaints might, because there's some people in chat, by the way, so I think a lot of the complaints might come from remembering the old game a lot better than it was. See, I, I, I remember Fallout 3 being worse than it actually looks when I looked up screenshots of it. I remember Fallout 3 being quite a... Uh, there wasn't many parts of Fallout 3 that I thought looked visually stunning. Probably the first time you walk out of the vault and you see the expanse of the land, that was pretty impressive. But other than that, I just remember being mainly kind of a yellowy colour. Hmm. But I didn't really care that much. That's the point I'm trying to make. I, I didn't really care about the graphics. It, they look better. Uh, oh, have we uh, lost you, Sam? Uh, Sorry. I... Might have oh. lost you, Sam. No, I was just waiting for you to finish what you were saying. <laughs> uh, no, I was waiting for you to finish what you were saying. I started speaking and then stopped myself, so carry on. No, I think we have lost you. Sorry, you're, you're, <laughs> you're breaking up quite a lot. Let's see if it rectifies itself, and if not, well, I might have to turn your video off. Um, I don't think people are that hung up on graphics these days. I think the amount of pixel art in games and the, the sheer minimalism of some of the games that are coming out now means that people appreciate design like they always have, but they aren't they, aren't, they don't need a game to be, you know, 4K, perfectly global illuminated environments and stuff like that. I mean, but they I don't. can't expect it with a game like this, I guess. The graphics aren't really a big thing with this game. Well, no, they have been, and that's the thing. Remember when the Fallout 4 video came out, um, the trailer video, uh, at, was it E3? It came yeah. out. It? Remember that came out? Everybody complained about the graphics. Everybody was t talking about that ass, you know? Yeah, so I did as well. And it does look like they actually went some way to uh, solving that by making the female character's ass a much nicer shape. <laughs> But, um, I haven't really paid that much attention to somewhat to the people's asses, to be fair. But uh, the, what I have noticed about Fallout 4 is that it makes the the locations more distinctive, and I think that's the part that works really well. Because places have their own colour schemes, because there are more colours than just yellow everywhere, it looks more arcadey. It looks more like, you know, like for, uh, um, War, uh, World of Warcraft, how every location has got yeah. its own palette and look to it i love that in games because it gives you a real sense of place mm. and it looks like fallout 4 has definitely gone down that path so that you're not in this kind of homogenous wilderness you go to very vibrant looking locations all the time yeah no yeah, yeah. I, I agree and, and i think they're very interesting mm. the locations and I bet the graphics and the colour palette have a lot to do with that. Everything feels more interesting than it did in Fallout 3 to me. If, even though I loved Fallout 3, I, I, I did love it and I spent a lot of hours in it. There's something about this one that makes me want to explore every little nook and cranny, you know? I think there's a there's an issue which is a constant issue in games is graphics versus aesthetic value. Fallout 4 has a very good sense of aesthetics. Like, it looks nice. It's easy on the eye, which is why 
games like Super Mario and whatnot still look nice because they have a good aesthetic value. Yeah, yeah, we've come on leaps and bounds in graphics. So where Fallout Three, I think, stumbled a bit was that it didn't have a great aesthetic value to it. I agree. Uh, uh, given that it was made on the same engine, I much prefer walking around the world of Oblivion and just mm. seeing that world because it felt more alive and vibrant and pleasing on the eye. But I whereas think Fallout Three didn't. Whereas this, they've got a nice balance of the desolation. Plus, it still feels a bit more colourful. Uh, it's a sort of hard line to walk. If it was too bright, you'd be like, oh, fuck this, this is nonsense. It's not a post-apocalypse at all. Yeah, well, no, that's, so, that's what I was going to say. I thought maybe they felt they could get away with it in <laughs> Fallout 3 because it was post-apocalyptic. And they thought, oh, an atom bomb's dropped. Everything's pretty much knackered. So let's make it all look knackered and all the same colour. <laughs> you know, but mm. maybe they've, 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 again, struck the balance with Fallout 4. Okay, moving on. So to settlements. Oh, now this is the this is, this is the main new feature of Fallout Four that I have. I've spent forty eight hours playing this game so far. I spent seventeen hours on the first day playing it because I decided right, I'm not going to do any game dev. I'm going to play Fallout Four because it's out, and um, all of that time, bar maybe two or three missions that I've done, which maybe took a few hours has been settlements, building settlements. I've got about six to ten settlements now, and all of them are proper beefed up, and I've got nearly 20 people living in each of them, and it's absolutely ridiculous. What do you so guys Chris, think of them? So Chris, you're playing the Sims, basically, aren't you? I'm, I am basically playing the Sims, yes. <laughs> um, I've only got the one settlement. I've only played about four hours of the game, um, and... What I've mainly done is I've gone to the first town. I can't remember the name of it. Got the uh, the laser musket, helped the well, uh, the black guy, and then settled um, sanctuary. Cause I didn't I didn't even do that. You know what? I, uh, the first thing I did, uh, the first place I ended up was Red Rocket. Um, oh, oh, so, the garage. Yeah, yeah. The yeah garage, you, yeah. you can get that as a settlement before I even arrived at sanctuary. So I went to, oh no, sorry, I went to Sanctuary and then I went off. Yeah, no, no, sorry, you're right. You come out of the vault, you go to Sanctuary. Then I went off to do a mission before I even started settling at Sanctuary. Got um, got the Red Rocket place and just completely beefed that up to, to the like the top. I could, I could get it. And um, I, I swear to God, the amount of times I'm running out of steel is ridiculous. I can't find enough steel. Everything else I'm fine with. Ceramic but, seems to be a difficult one for me. Oh, Aluminium in, in for, for electricity. Yeah. Cir circuits were circuits, copper, anything that needed to you know to build electronic stuff. That took that was a uh, problem early on. But now because I've got settlements, and you see that was just placing some stalls there. Once you've got stalls and you man the stalls, and you, I've got maybe twenty stalls in all. They are constantly, there's people constantly scavenging for you to get you extra stuff and they end up in your workshop and the stalls constantly give you money and give you additional items such as if it's a weapon stall, they'll give you weapons, if it's an armor stall, give you armor, etc. Um, scavengers will go off and get you telephones and circuit boards and all kinds of stuff. So the bigger your settlements, the more, the, the easier it is to make settlements. Yeah. Excuse me. But how much of the how much have you played of the settlements, guys? You said you've only got one, Lou. I've only got sanctuary, but I, it's most of my time in the game has been spent in the settlement stuff, building building that up. I haven't got much in the way of like uh, I haven't got any guns or anything. I set up a fire trap, connected it straight to a, a generator, and it just pissed out a load of fire and then stops. <laughs> so I, don't yeah, know I, did, I did that with a Tesla trap by accident. I put it in the middle of my settlement, thinking, "Oh, it'll just fire when enemies are near." No. No, just I guess you have to hook it up some kind of a tripwire or something. It killed two of my settlers and, and, <laughs> and, and destroyed three of my turrets. Yeah. <laughs> I was like, for fuck's sake. Because <laughs> the problem was I put it down and then I ran straight off. I didn't even look at what it was doing, so it just destroyed what was around it. I think this is probably the most surprising feature of this game, because there wasn't really much talk about this stuff. Mm -hmm. Um, there was a fair, there was, there was a fair amount of E3. Initially, no, initially, initially when they first showed it, they just showed it as a Fallout game with new graphics and stuff. And then it was a few days later that they started talking about the settlement stuff. Okay, um, the main, the main announcement like that I cool. saw, the main announcement I saw, they had a fair amount of settlement talk in there. I just saw they had a corpse in the room that was spoiling <laughs> it. You, yeah, you, have to, you have to clear that particular settlement out of ghouls and they're just... They're everywhere. Here you I've go. There's a, a quick, quick Bethesda bug moment. 
Look, I've put a I've put a house down in the middle of uh, this particular settlement, and there's bushes coming through the floor. Of course. For fuck's right. sake, they could right, at least go. Me. Oh, if if Pala on ground remove bushes. <laughs> Not hard, is it? Come on. Come on. A question in chat is. Um, as Howlin' Mad Dog Reed has asked, would you play a game which only had the settlement side of Fallout 4? Yeah. I mean, it's brilliant that it's got more, but yeah, I would. I'm into these kind of games, though. I mean, I, I like The Sims, that kind of thing. I don't play them that much, but... I'm... I probably wouldn't. I enjoy it because it's part of a larger experience. Because once you've got your settlements, you can also defend them, so you're still running around shooting people who are attacking your settlements if you want to. Super Mutant, if you've got any Brahmin, Super Mutants absolutely love to attack your settlement. Nice. Uh, so they love cow. Yeah. I've got two set up with Brahmin feeding troughs and trying to get... Um, I'm trying to get them all to a certain level. I'm obviously doing Sanctuary the most because it's the first one that I started. Um, but I, I've been, I sort of periodically will... Go back there, do a, a, a Minutemen mission, spend a, like a 15 minutes or so pissing around in the sanctuary and then carry on. So I really like it. It's actually what I like is the fact that you can just break up the exploration kind of gameplay with this. And that's a nice little, it's a nice little way to give the game more variety. So yeah. I really like it for that. And more depth as well. Because I, I just enjoy it. The, the whole point is that Fallout the universe is that the, the you know the Great War wiped out a lot of humanity and building settlements is what you would do if there was some of you left and I love yeah. the fact that that's in the game. The it is. It's a very it's a very interesting um, addition to the game. They've basically they've, they've looks like they've looked at the trend at the moment, which is survival games, construction games, and. The way they've implemented it in Fallout 4 seems to be very nice. It's very... It's still a Fallout game. There's still all of that Fallout world to do and all the quests and stuff like that. But this, tacked onto it, feels like a really nice mod that's been added at launch. It doesn't mm. really feel like it's tacked on to me. It feels like it's 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 a, a integral part of the game, I have to be honest. I mean, it could, you could it, play it without it. but it's It's tied into your character and... The well, I don't know much about the overarching plot, but it seems to be tied into that as well. The Minutemen thing, and going around and sort of like trying to rebuild, is seems like quite an important part of the game and the sanctuary stuff. The, you know, the, all this sort of base building, whatever you want to call it, community building stuff, is actually really important to, to what the game is trying to achieve, I think. Even though you want to go up, you're going to be able to and like, go around and, you know, explore strange buildings and shoot mutants in the face and that kind of stuff. It feels like you're working towards a larger goal, which actually is something that the previous Fallout game kind of lacked a little bit. And I, I, this is sort of going to segue for me into the fact that every single item in the game is useful. Every hmm. single item in the game is useful. Every single thing that you pick up can be reconstituted and reused, also, rather than just being tapped that weighs you down. There's been a lot of, um, a lot of criticism about that, though. A lot of people say, it's taking up all of my time doing this. But you don't have to do any settlement stuff if you don't want to. It's taking up a lot of my time and my inventory management is almost impossible now because everything's useful. There was a meme, a meme or mem or whatever. I saw, meme. I saw on um, a nuke.com posted it, uh, Lonrem, who was one of our guests a while ago, uh, his website. Uh, they, It was a, a picture of a fat boy the the big nuclear missile launcher thing that you get um a telephone typewriter and uh i don't know a bit of cloth or something it went oh look a telephone typewriter and a cloth Th that yeah. was just the fact that that, that it, your priorities totally change with this game i'm <laughs> sick of weapons i'm sick of armor i don't i, don't, I, I just li i leave them even because all they do is they give you a little bit of cloth and a little bit of steel, and sometimes depending on what armor it is or leather. I have found myself completely looting every character that I kill. Yep, so do I. And naked, naked people laying everywhere in the wilderness. I think I'm about level 22 now, and I've only just stopped um, looting everybody because I've got to a point now where I don't need to, and all I'm doing, I'm, I've I've equipped all of my settlers with like combat armor, the the best armor I could get. For the t for the moment, anyway, and um, the 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 rest of the time is spent just trying to build things in my settlements, and it's not really that useful anymore. 
How do you find the actual settlement interface? Because I'm watching the video now when you're really struggling to place things, and I found that as well. I found, like, especially fences, like wire fences, were not playing ball and not going in the direction I wanted them to. Yeah, um, if, yeah. You, if you use... There's a few different types of items and uh, junk fences you can place anywhere, and, you, and they don't clip to anything. They don't stick to anything. Um, some of the small fences will clip to... Uh, clip to the bottom of walls, at uh, bottom of settlement buildings, and uh, there's there's walls that will clip to each other. Yeah. So it's it's quite it depends on what you're doing. I've ended up using walls for quite a lot of stuff now, instead of junk fences because junk I fences are quite difficult. The bounding box on them is is a bit awkward. I found it very tricky, and especially like, if you're building inside a building, suddenly things go through the ceiling and try and be on the floor above and stuff. It was quite clunky, I found. Yeah, it is. Um, and I have to be honest, I think I'm to, we might as well move on to uh, onto the interface and the UI and the control system because it kind of all sticks together. Um, thanks for the follow, Howling Mad Dog Reed. Sorry, you haven't. Oh, you have got a pop up because we're on this particular screen. But um, anyway, so yeah, the. I. I absolutely love the settlement making but yes the interface drags a little bit it's it'd, it'd be nice to get a, a, a bird's eye view and be able to place things down like that wouldn't it or have a free camera yeah and i think yeah, there'll be a I mod agree. that will come out to do that now if you remember in skyrim someone brought i don't know if you ever played uh, got the particular mod but someone brought out a map mod that was a real t i know it was real-time map anyway but they brought out a map where you could um you could move not move things around but you could like choose things more real time it's better than the normal map and you could add extra markers and extra kind of stuff on it and i'm hoping that they'll do something like that for the settlements one of the things i have a problem with is not knowing because I've, I've got so many settlers now what each settler is doing because you have to have mm. what that settler is doing in view and especially with the bigger settlements it's like they could be doing something that's on the other side of the settlement and if i highlight them i can't see that thing being highlighted no matter where i stand you know, and it's like it's really difficult to figure out which settlers would be better off doing something else. So I'm hoping someone's going to bring up some kind of interface mods that allow it to let you see that. All that would need is to so you can ask their name as a settler, and it'll just say assignment, whatever you've assigned them to. Mm. Assignment non, assignment yep. farming, assignment defense. Yep. It, that's all it would need. That's like a tiny thing. I agree though, because I've got like a settlement when I've gone, all right, I'll put you over here. And then my, my food's gone down, and I was like, oh, shit, I didn't farm it a minute ago. Oh, I've got to get yeah. somebody else doing that now. But so, have I got anybody yeah. available? What's more important? It's you need, In order to properly, proper, properly resource manage, you need to have more information. Simple as that. Mm. So, and I do agree that doing it all in first person feels, as much as you want to, you don't want to be taken out of the game in terms of, like, going into excessive menus, which you've already got a lot of in your pit boy. If for this thing, I do agree, doing it all in first person as you go feels a little bit uh, slapdash, especially when you try to build structures. Uh, when you try to sort of, sometimes you'll find um, uh, in the first place sanctuary, you get like uh, houses that you can totally take away. You still got the foundation then and you can build walls around that. But some of the walls, yeah, they really don't want to fit together well. And you have walls that are like not together. They'll have like one and then an inch gap and it's like, I just don't want it. It doesn't look nice. Do you yeah. know, like, he screams when there's gaps. Yep. Uh, yeah, I want, I want like smooth fucking flat walls that go all the way around, <laughs> not hodgepodge <laughs> bits of shit. I, just, but, I, mean, ugh, I want it to look good. <laughs> I find the, I find the interface in general. I mean, I don't know what it's like on console, but even though we've got more keys available to us, we've got more control options on PC. It just doesn't. It's not very friendly. It's not. Um, the I find the Pip Boy now. I don't know if it's not changed that much from Fallout 3, but it just seems to be very fiddly now. I'm I'm sick to death of accidentally giving my armor to somebody. I'm sick to death of accidentally um, double clicking on a uh, on a on a fast travel place and then or, or trip. Oh yeah, double. Sorry, I, I click on a fast travel area and if i'm right in the center of the map i double click and it and it takes me straight there and it's like no i just wanted to place a marker there i'm sick to death of the the being hidden controls one of the controls that i wasn't aware of until today and i've been playing it for nearly a week now was if i hold down e 
while I'm this is while I'm in the um, workshop mode on, in a settlement. Hold down E, and I use the scroll mouse, uh, the mouse scroll. It moves any item that I've got up and down vertically. Okay, Where, there was nothing about that. Uh, sorry. There's nothing about that in there the is in the in the help in the in the droves of help documents, mm. but there's okay. nothing on the interface to tell you to do that. But if you use the mouse scroll normally, it just goes back and forward away from you and towards you, it, depending on what type of item it is. I knew that anyway. Um, and if you use the mouse buttons or F and G, it will rotate the item, but it still doesn't stop it clipping against things that it should clip against. And it's like, no, just let me put it where I want to put it. Let me press a button if I want it to snap. That's it, not clipping. Totally the wrong word. Snapping to another item. Ugh. Is this a good time for me to talk about my... Well, w there I am. There I am. <laughs> there is, what? You just, is you that just, you? You just missed me. Let's have a look. All right, I thought I was there looking at that. <laughs> <laughs> See what I mean? I look like a dick with a helmet on. <laughs> <laughs> it's nearly there. It's not. It's not perfect, but it's. Uh... You look a little more like um, Leonidas. Now the amount of times as well when I've been playing, I, the, the interface changes so much. You've got up, down, left, right when you're doing, um, when you're talking, when your dialogue's on. But sometimes it's press E, F, G, and X. Sometimes it's do. It, it, there's no consistency for no. me. I, I think that might be a that might be an issue, which I'm sure Lou's going to talk about of them aiming their interface like they did with Skyrim at the console market. Because for me, most of the in-game interface on the PlayStation controller is absolutely fine. The favoriting system, um, you've got your directional buttons, so you've got like three slots up, three slots down, three slots left, and three slots right for your favorites, which is quite good. So you've got like you know twelve of it in total there, which is pretty good. Um, and I find the Pit Boy is the same as it was in Fallout Three. It's still a little bit unwieldy, but that's the Pit Boy, so I kind of expect it. But the most of the in-game interface is actually find the dialogue options again: triangle, square, circle, X. That never varies; it's always the same. Um, so that's probably a problem where they've tried to make it more accessible for console players on controllers, but failed miserably at making it anywhere near usable for PC gamers. Which is a shame, it's, especially for a series that started out on PC. Yeah. So, my problem is that I play left-handed, as you probably know from watching this stream. So, I normally play on the cursor keys, and all of my controls are around the cursor keys. Which is normally fine, but in Fallout 4 and in a lot of new games recently, the developers have taken it upon themselves to basically hard-code bind, so you've got to press the E key to do certain things, you've got to press the R key, and you can't change those. That's a problem for me as well, though, because I don't use the arrow keys, and what, f like the dialogue, for example, we just saw, you have to use the arrow keys for it. Yeah, yeah. So this is the, this, it's got to a point now with Fallout 4 where I spent three hours setting up um, a program called Auto Hotkey so that I could actually play the game, because the problem I had was I, I was on the cursor keys, I got to the first settlement bit, and realised that I couldn't move and place things at the same time because my cursor keys were being overridden by the menus for all of the the uh, structures and stuff. Yeah. So I thought, okay, what I'm going to do here, I need to use those keys. So I basically have to leave all the, the binds in the game pretty much default and then use auto hotkey to set the keys outside of the game. And that's the only way I've been able to do it. But they still allow you to change some of the keys, but not all of them. It's Why would you do that? I don't know. I I really don't know why the why the this is a trend because it's not. I mean, this the thing is this game and Skyrim were both terrible for con for PCs. I mean, do they just test them on console? Do they not have like PC gamers having a go? They, they clearly don't test it on with anyone who plays anything other than WASD. Well, the, because the even if you play ESDF. Moving forward means you try to loot everything and you get killed every time you walk into a settlement. Mm. So, I just, uh, yeah, it's like, how does this get past quality assurance? I, I don't understand. Unless everyone's playing with the default controls, there can't be. Not everyone who's testing a game plays the default controls, surely. But the thing is, is that you're still playing it <clears throat> and you're still buying it. And that's the problem, I think. Mm. 
Yes, but but, the, but then but then are you going to forego an experience that Fallout Four is a really good game? Is the lack of like, sort of customizable controls a good enough reason to not buy it at all? I guess so, that's the balance, isn't it? No, in my opinion, but. <laughs> That's the problem, isn't it? That the developers, no matter who they are, no matter how much respect you have for them, I've got a lot of respect for Bethesda for years of providing quality games, you know, with bugs, but quality, very good, well designed games. Uh, uh, they're just not going to pay attention unless people, people stop buying the games because of these issues. But it's, it's annoying that, that there's a lot of bugs in this game which have been around since Skyrim and probably since Oblivion and Morrowind and games before that. They, they don't seem to be learning from people's complaints of the game. They seem to be completely ignoring this stuff to the point where with Skyrim it t- took someone modding the game to be able to bind certain keys like the um, keypad keys, for instance. It's just well, like, wh- what is going on at Bethesda? Are they, are they listening to that that part of the community or are they just trying to fix... I don't know what they're doing because they still crash the desktop stuff as well. There you is know, a few. It's, there's something that's plagued Bethesda games since Morrowind and probably games before that is the ubiquitous crash to desktop, especially as you save game goes. The game just randomly crashes. I've, well, we'll get onto bugs later on, but we, we're talking about the interface at the moment and the, the, and the controls. Been, yeah, the interface has been a big sticking point for me to the point where the, that's probably the reason why I've spent so few hours on it because I've found it very difficult to get my machine in a position where I can actually control the game and play it even normally. There will be mods um, as soon as they open the Steam Workshop there'll be loads more mods. There's already a few mods on ne- on, on Nexus mods um, you know but I I mean we shouldn't have to do that to make it playable. I'm, I'm not happy with some of the controls it's almost as if they demand that we have two thumbsticks you know to, for it to, to work. But I, I really don't want to play it with my control pad. I really don't. No, we don't. That's how I run PC. <laughs> well, no, some people still with play. It's a better control method, which is mouse and keyboard. Uh, right. But the point is, is that they're, they're focusing on control pad support here, aren't they? Most of the time. And it's not just consoles. It's available. People have a con- control pads available on PC. So they're just going, whatever. Mm. WSD is still not perfect, so it's not like they, they're not focusing on on keyboard C- control. C- control pads are more. I don't know. I, I I I guess you get accustomed to it, but a controller is slightly more ergonomically comfortable, isn't it? In a way, though, because it's something you just hold in your hand and control everything in one go. Thing is, with the PC, that you, with a PC, you have to be sat at a desk in front of a computer anyway, so the mouse mm. and keyboard are already there, and you do get a lot more fine grain control out of a mouse. A hell of a lot. Around. No, I understand that. I understand that. But for a lot of people, our point is is that it's a bit more... I think it can be a bit more comfortable to have the controller with it all in, on the controller rather than it being a complicated keyboard. That, again, not everybody is as comfortable knowing where every single key on a keyboard is. It Even is, if it's just the one they need for the game. The something... point is, is that a controller is more accessible. The people that are trying to get into a bit of PC gaming but haven't had time doing it, uh, having the facility to plug your Xbox controller in is quite probably welcome to them. I'm not excusing it or saying that. I'm just saying this is what a lot of people will be doing and they're click catering to that market. Because for me, this gameplay has... <laughs> the actual game feel of the gameplay for me is so much better than it was in Fallout 3 and I'm playing it on a controller. So it feels... The gameplay for me feels quite smooth and quite nice compared to even Skyrim. I, I remember I remember playing Morrowind on my Xbox, my original Xbox, and finding the controls on the pad were really nice. Probably better than the PC. So even back then they were focusing on um playing on pad. Mm. That's always been their first concern, but it's just the level of laziness now with their support for keyboard and mouse is truly awful. Uh, you have to go hack into in, uh, any files to change things like the up-down sensitivity is half of the left-right sensitivity. Yep. So you've got to go fishing around in files to change that. You've got to go and look, you've got to go and Google the problem and you might not even be aware what the problem is. It just The mouse feels weird. I can't yeah, aim properly. I, I had, I played maybe the first, I don't know, half a day uh, of the game with mouse acceleration on because there was no option to turn it off. Um, and it took me quite a while to find all of the hacks on all the forums to get mouse acceleration turned off. And when I did, 
instantly felt it felt brilliant to play a really good to play i really enjoy the mouse movement now but before that there was something about it i don't know if it was the v-sync i don't know if it was the mouse the fact v-sync mouse acceleration and a lot of other things were going on and the as you said the half horizontal and sorry half ver half um y movement of the mouse uh, comparison to the x movement it was uh, well, as we've been talking i've been thinking as you guys have been talking sorry that maybe they're spending so much time on or, or, or they're spending time ignoring the keyboard is because it's not analog and they spend quite a lot of extra dev time programming analog into the game the movement for example is probably analog i'd imagine you can hold, uh, can, uh, sam can you tell us this yeah, yeah. If, you, if you hold down slightly does it go yeah, very it's, slowly it's fully analog yeah so we have to press a we have to press three different buttons we've got three different speeds on keyboard now i've been looking up recently because of metal gear solid 5 i've been looking up recently trying to find an analog keyboard to play it with the closest i could find was a keypad a hand keypad that's got a number like 20 or 30 keys on it with a little thumbstick for the movement and i still don't really want that although it's still better as long as i've got the mouse to see i don't mind that so much and then I was looking up. Uh, I was I was trying to find. There was a Kickstarter I could find that was uh, that I found that had some kind of some kind of analog keys in it as well. But it was really low quality, and the project had kind of failed. But that's what we need, I think, as gamers, uh, as PC gamers, we need an analog keyboard where you hold down W slightly and you move forward slightly. <laughs> I don't know if I'd like that. Well, you don't have to. You could turn it on or off. I'm sure. Yeah. But the point is, is, then, is isn't that. Isn't that preferable to having sort of like walk fast, walk slow? Yeah. I mean, I'm for example, crouch fast, crouch like slow. To, yeah. Any, any time that you're sneaking, having an analog control over how fast you move is of paramount importance to whether you get detected or not. Absolutely, in Metal Gear Solid Five. I, I, if I had, and in I, this, I didn't fall out for. I would. I don't think it is in Fallout. If you're sneaking, then you're sneaking, and it no, just bit, no, it is. It's just a roll. No, if, if, you, if you if you sneak at full pace, you're a lot easier to detect. There's there's three different paces on PC. There's um there's uh, sprint there's run and there's walk and there isn't a sprint when you crouch but there is a run and a walk when you crouch if that sprint. Makes, you know what i mean there's there's two different speeds uh, on pc at least when you're uh, when you crouched but you could have all the variations in between if you had a keypad and the faster you go if you use the sprint people hear you while you're uh, sneaking but if you use the walk or the the tiptoe very very slowly while crouched while while in sneak mode they don't hear you depending on your skill of course but it definitely affects it and the well, same I didn't know that the same applies in Metal Gear Solid 5 because that's why I was looking this thing up I was like right I'm sick of going either full pelt with without my sneaking suit on and everyone hearing me or really 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 slow and not being able to catch up with the guards if I have mm. the sneaking suit on I can go full pelt but you know it's it's like it's like I've, i can't play it i can't get the most out of the game without the analog i want a left-handed analog control whether it's stick based you know even with my thumb while i'm while i'm holding onto my keys or wasd based i don't care which it is there's quite a lot of keypads out there that have this but the problem is with the, the commercial keypads that are out there is that the stick is still digital it's still on or off it's not analog so that someone had done I said kind of a half measure with the keyboard but it's not went very far so problem I, your own. there you go well i was looking into it you know but it's one of those things it's like it, it's quite a lot of r d quite a lot of I, i'm shit at soldering for one <laughs> anyway i'm rambling a little bit so shall we move on shall we move? oh actually before we do um last thing to mention on the ui is the pit boy into um sorry the pit boy companion app which I took a screenshot of or I took a photo of uh, a while back. I've been using it quite a lot. I've got my tablet on my left hand side and I've got the game up and you can, you can tell it. In fact, I'll, I've got my tablet here and I'll load it up while, uh, while I'm talking about it, but it connects to the game. You turn it on in the game and it's basically your pit boy. Come on. It's basically your pit boy. So you can change your weapons while you're playing the game but you still need another hand to do it so it's not really that much uh, that much use my tablet's just reset itself for the first time ever by the way never done that <laughs> before ever Kit failure yep. i've um, tried 
Spotify app, but unfortunately, because I've got an iPhone 4S, it's the smallest screen in the entire world, and you can't even read the text. You know, it's really good for a, for a shitty gimmick. It's really good, and it actually it works. Good. It works really well, and I, I like it especially for having a map up and looking at where I'm pointing. One of the things I've found quite a lot is while I'm in the game, pressing Tab to bring up my, my Pip Boy and look at my map and go, and then put it back down again, and then up, and then and it's it's just annoying to figure out which direction I'm heading. Because markers aren't the best in this game, I've found. Um, so having it on the pit boy, that's brilliant. Love it. You could even change weapons on the fly as well while you're doing it. But in fact, you could give it to your wife, or you could give it to your girlfriend, and she could change weapons for you and I manage just, your inventory. I've just had a really great idea. I think there is um, there's an Android emulator called Android. Right. You could have to another monitor. Get the pit boy app and have your pit boy on another screen. Only if you play window mode. That. Only if you I play just, window. I just can't play border, borderless window mode because I, of another bug. <clears throat> I can't play borderless window because I've got a 4K screen and I can only play it in 20, uh, 1440p. So if I play it in 1440p, it's a tiny little window on my 4K screen. If right. I play it in 1440p full screen. In fact, there's a bug with it. I can't even play it like that. I can't play it at, at borderless window full screen with... Yeah, it, it's it, it's bugged anyway. There's a problem with trying to run it or stretch the screen um, in borderless windows, so I have to play full screen. So alt tab in takes about a year and a half okay. <laughs> for me to actually get past it. I'm, I might try that though and report <clears> back <throat> because uh, that's that could be quite usable then. I'm not sure you know because you still have to come out of the game then to do this. You do, which is a bit of a problem. It'd be, it'd be nice if you had like a touch screen monitor as well. Cool little um, little sounds it makes as well. I thought was pretty good. But you can, you can even, picks. there's offline mode as well, so that's how you can see inventory, if anyone can see that very well, but you can basically, you know, scroll through everything, go to your inventory, see your map, see where you've been, can you scroll in? No, you can't zoom in with that. No, you can't zoom in, but it's still, it's, it's not Google Maps, Chris. <laughs> uh, you can zoom in in the game, so turn radio on and off. Zoom in in the game, yeah. You can do... Everything you can even one thing I found it really good for as well is dropping shit tons of items Because if you go into your inventory in the game Drop loads and loads of items onto the ground. They all drop in a circle around you But if you drop them via the pit boy if you just open up your inventory and click that and then Click quick tapping drop one it ta it drops quicker and two it drops immediately in front of you and, you, and they're just in a night Well a neat, you know a Bethesda neat pile in front of you <laughs> Um, it's it's good. I mean, I'm not I'm not using it all the time, but it is quite handy, and it's, and the map's the best part of it, I think. But for once, we've got a second screen thing that is actually useful. Yeah, it is. It is quite nice, actually. Uh, has anyone played uh, Battlefield Four with? Or is it Battlefield Four with the uh, command app or whatever it is, where one player can basically play on a tablet and direct the battle? No. But that's really the first big use of that second screen tablet functionality isn't it I, w I wasn't aware of it that's pretty cool yeah there's a you can you can join a server on a tablet from anywhere and play the game in command mode so you've got like a schematic view of the the map and you can direct the team around and stuff and use uh voice comms with them as well right I think it's a pretty cool idea it was, it was kind of the, the the gimmick of battlefield 4 that's oh, quite well, a cool I idea for that kind of game i could understand I, haven't, I wasn't even aware that existed. Imagine I haven't got Battlefield 4, so... No, got, me neither. I've got three, but not four. So, shall we move on to the combat? Yeah. So, combat, enemies, vats, that kind of thing. Um, I used to be a massive vat hall with, uh, with Fallout 3 because it paused the battle and I could... The, 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 the gunplay wasn't very good, so you kind of needed it. Yeah, the gunplay wasn't great in uh, Fallout 3. It, it was serviceable for the kind of game that it was, but it wasn't particularly good. The, the opposite is true of this, though. I find that the gunplay is much better than the VATs. Well, again, you have to upgrade VATs for it to be anywhere near useful. Mm, um, that's the thing. I found it to be... Um, I don't know. Until I got my mouse working, it was really difficult. Um, I've got a brand... You'll love this, Lou. I have. After... God knows how many years I've got a new mouse pad. 
I can't see it. It's off the side of my screen. Oh, sorry. Well, anyway, I've got a new <laughs> I've got a new mouse pad. I unfortunately went for a Razer mouse pad, so it's it's not amazing, but it's uh, big and works, and it's really, really, really smooth. So I have to lower my sensitivity even lower than I normally have it. So I'm on something like 0.1 sensitivity now. Right. I've actually, for the first time in a long time, stopped using a mouse pad because my desk is really nice and I've got a good mouse with big, fat Teflon feet on it. Yeah, same here. I've got a, a Corsair M65 now with loads of programmable features in it and shit tons of DPI settings and stuff, which I use. It's also got a sniper button on it that you press and it lowers your DPI like while you've got the button pressed so you can you can use that. It's quite, quite handy for some things. To, uh, okay. But anyway, How the hell do you not blow that guy's head up the first shot there? I know, that's what I do. I, I, whenever the shot, whenever I've got, a sh especially the double barrel shotgun anyway, I don't use that anymore. I've got a combat one now. Yeah, I've got get, a combat shotgun now. Get really close to them, turn vats on, target the head, and then try and kill them, but... And then game. I see you're playing in the power armor here as well. I am. I don't play the power armor too much because of the cause. I've got four or five of them now. Um, but you know, even just running normally drains the core. Yeah, I've I've not played with the power armor that much because it's a it's a like a resource that can run out, and I keep going, oh, I'll save that for something big. So I think what I'm going to do is, if I know that there's a certain mission that I think I want to like wear it for, I'll use it because I've got enough cores to repower it a few times now, and I keep finding them. I keep finding them all over the place. I've got what? like seven. I've got four and I haven't really been looking for them but if you go to um, there's a number of places you can get them if you do all the Brotherhood of Steel missions there's loads mm. in those and there's there's also military outposts as well yeah yeah they're not only a military outpost they, they prop up in random power generators if you'd like me and I'm guessing like we all are you scour every single corner and every single bit of every level that you go to every building then you've got to find them because they're, they're plugged into generators they're plugged into this that and you can just like take them what do we feel? What do we feel about the um, the weapons, though, in terms of difference to Fallout Three? Uh, the weapons feel a lot a lot better in this game to me. Well, specifically, the upgrade um, methods. Now, remember, in Fallout Three, you ha you got a weapon, and then you have to keep using weapons that you find to repair them. If you remember, yeah, smashing a couple of Kalashnikovs together to make a better one. I absolutely I hated that. Yeah, I'm sure you could say that this not having that is just like dumbing down, but I think it's just removing um, an irritation. It's just removing an irritation. It, it was, was fucking annoying. It meant you had like 67 like shit assault rifles, like with this much like um, condition or whatever on them. Yep. So you had loads of weight all the time, and you had to try and smash them together when they wore out. And that means you had to keep spare ones because you knew that it was going to wear out, which again just weighed you down. And in this I game, you get weighed down by typewriters and cameras instead, which you don't want to, like, break apart, but whatever. Has anyone ever enjoyed durability in a game? It's just an annoying it, thing. Sometimes, it depends some, how it's implemented. Sometimes it's okay. Uh, in Fallout 3, it was awful. It was really awful, because it, just because of the sheer amount of inventory space you had to take up. Yeah. Um, I didn't. I, didn't, I haven't minded it in, in, in Oblivion and Skyrim in those kind of games, um, because was it, it was done in a different way. I'm pretty sure that the weapon damage was in Oblivion, yeah. I'm, I'm sure you had to repair your swords and stuff. I think you did, yeah. You did, yeah. Because I remember the, walking around with a million uh, armorers' hammers and things. Yeah, oh, armorers' yeah. hammers. That yeah, was yeah. okay, though, because you had armorers' hammers. <laughs> you know, to, you could just have one yeah, thing to repair staffers. them. That wasn't yeah, that too bad. That wasn't too bad. That was sort of like, it felt a little bit more like, yeah, if you're wandering around fighting monsters all the time, your weapons and armor are going to wear out a bit. But Whereas with guns, I've nice. always thought like... Yeah, I've always thought with guns, you can kind of spend your disbelief that the guns will just work. I mean, they did that in Far Cry 2, didn't they, where your guns would randomly jam on you. And it's like, I know that's cool and all and realistic, but I'm playing a game here. When I press fire, I want the fucking thing to fire. Mm. Yeah. Like, I want to get the feedback of me inputting the command. I don't yeah. want realism in that regard. Yeah, because it's like, a lot of people have uh, problems with games that intervene with random things like that. You want the you want your failures in the game to be a result of your lack of skill, not the game randomly deciding something. Yes, totally. Um, so, there's a few questions in chat. Sorry, I just wanted to answer. Um, Spiky was at a Vespula. Uh, I think he's referring to a mouse mat, and yes, it is. 
Um, those sunglasses must have saved him from the three lazy shots to the face. That's yeah, it looks like I was taking a hell of a beating. He finally finished him off by shooting him in the balls while dog meat was eating his arm. And uh, is the game on ultra hard? These clips seem to be taking a hell of a lot of shots to the head and just looking at you like what? Most of the clips that you're seeing are legendary people that I'm shooting. Um, legend there's, there's quite a few really oh, hard enemies with a lot of health so when they mutate it's like fucking hell and plus <laughs> quite a lot of them are when i was a low level too so it's you know it's it's i'm better at it now we'll put it that way that i'm taking a lot more health off them these days in fact i've got a, a few melee weapons which you know what i'm like with my my melee i'm a, a big fan of batting people uh, face to Me face too. i've got two melee weapons in particular i've got the death claw gauntlet which i picked up last night uh, which is awesome, but unfortunately, before I got that, I got something called the cr what was the Krems Tooth, which is it's got better, um, it's got better attack, and it's faster, and it also uh, poisons and lets pe and makes people bleed. So two hits with any normal like raider and the dead, and it's amazing. And you you get it on one of the missions, and I just I wasn't even on the mission. I just ran into somewhere and thought, oh, I'll just go. It was that place I was just at actually a minute ago. Um, I'll just go and go to the bottom of this pit. Ended up going down to this pit. Started seeing all these like visions of cults and stuff, and then went into a, a pool and found this this awesome melee weapon at the bottom of it. So I'm using that more than anything these days. I will. I will say this for the game: the fact that the the gameplay is quite good, no matter what way you want to take it. I think that in, again in Fallout Three, to my mind, playing in in a, in a big open wasteland, it feels like yeah, be a sniper. It seems to make the most sense to me. Survey a situation, shoot people in the face, and then go and clean up afterwards. That's what I do. That's what I'm doing in Fallout Four. So what I like, what I, I like the weapon mod system because. I've got a, a bayoneted sniper rifle, so you can now do melee attacks with your weapon, which is fucking great. Yeah. Because you can go, you can go bang, bang, bang. They get a bit close. Dish, dish. Job done. It's like I really like that. It feels like you don't have to fuck around in the middle of a fight, changing your weapons all the time. You can just give them a quick dink with the butt of your rifle or stab with the bayonet. Once so, they backed off a little bit, shoot with a face. What do you think about the upgrade system then? Because I've been getting into that quite a lot recently. I've upgraded my science, my blacksmith, and one yeah. of the, a gun nut or something, I think. I um, like it. I need to upgrade myself a bit more. I've been trying to get a few of my sort of base getting around the world perks up a bit. I'm level 17 now, so I'm getting to the point where I can start to pump things into the gun, the gun nut and the, uh, the science and the armourer perks a bit more. Because now I can survive a little bit. I feel like I can start getting my guns like. Yeah, I usually I nails. usually attack these kind of games. Excuse me, by getting all my strength up and getting all of the carry perks, so I can pick up everything in the game. <laughs> but I haven't done that this time round. I'm still picking everything up in the game. I'm just taking a few more trips back home this time. Um, but what I did in this one is I I beef, beefed up my endurance, and my endurance was at level ten before almost anything else. So I had lots of hit points. I could run. Uh, I had more AP. I could run further. One thing I found is I couldn't run away from Maya Lurks and Rad Scorpions at the very beginning of the game. And I, I li if I went too far away from a settlement, I was dead instantly because I just I couldn't run, you know. Um, but now, if you I put the difficulty up, because I'm playing it on normal, I don't find it's that. I haven't been killed by random attacks that often. I've only died twice, and once you saw then um, by that was by a legendary guy at the end of a, a chasm, and I didn't have I had dog meat with me, but he. He was dead around the corner, so um, I, I I think I've got it on normal. I don't think I put it on hard this time. I haven't changed it. I just was curious if either of you had it. No. So I haven't. No, I keep on normal. But I found the weapon upgrade system to be really cool, especially now I've got some of the perks. You can basically as you f and and I didn't realise this again until maybe the last couple of days. As you find weapons. Say you find a, a weapon with a, a, mus, um, a, a silencer on it, you can actually get take that silencer off it and put it on another weapon without having the gun nut level three perk. As long it, you need the gun nut level three to make the suppressor, but you don't need it to put it on another gun. All you have to okay. do is sacrifice some junk, um, some components to make the standard mod. So you basically you say instead of the suppressor on that weapon, I want to put the normal muzzle on it. 
spend a few bits of junk, take the muzzle off it and stick it on the other one. And I've, I've actually got a fair few weapons now, which I haven't shown any screenshots, um, any videos, that have uh, almost fully upgraded to, to the max and they're pretty damn good as well. But I, I like it. It's, it's reminiscent of Skyrim's. It's got a lot of uh, Skyrim feel to it in terms of the blacksmithing and the upgrade system in that. But it's I also... like it because it's it's it, one of the, what I like about this game is that it, it feels very much like they're delivering on something that they've the Bethesda has touted for a long time, which is the idea of an individual experience. Like the way that you upgrade your weapons and the way that I do and that Luke does is going to be different. I might focus on certain kinds of armor. I'm going to like certain kinds of guns. This da 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 da. And like we're all going to do different things for different playstyles. And not only. And we might have a general like sniper or an up close play style, but specifically there'll be different mods. Like I might want loads of ammo, um, extra ammo things, or I might want a really powerful scope, or not a powerful scope. I might want a reflex sight. It's all that stuff that like it makes it feel personal to you that you're the only one that's probably going to have that exact, not the only one, but you're one of the. You're not going to have many other people that have the exact same combination of loadout and play style that you do and it feels like they try to give you that experience which i really appreciate I, I like that kind of thing especially in an open world game like this where that's what you want you want to feel like you've sort of created a character who could go out and has forged themselves into the weapon that they want to be well, yeah it's, um, it's it's the same across the board though the weapon upgrade system the perks the the leveling the perks and the leveling works quite different in this game though For, again every single bethesda game has always had a twist on how you know they've always had base attributes but they've had a twist on how you apply those attributes how they gained how they build them up it doesn't seem to you don't seem to level up as you play in this game like you have done in previous games you know like you can't level your mm. agility up by swimming or jumping a lot it doesn't happen, does it? Yeah, there, are, there are no skills. It's 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 it, it opposite to the Skyrim leveling system, where in Skyrim you leveled up just by doing stuff. If you kept smacking stuff with swords, you got better at it. That's simple as that. Whereas in this, you have to choose what to get better at. So Which it's a bit weird to, in that regard. It's an older way of doing things, though. This it's how they used to. But they've got. I didn't. It, it took me a little bit to figure it out. So my setup isn't probably quite how I would now have it. Uh, but it's the same with every leveling system. It always, I always take a little bit to figure them out. So with these ones, you have to level up your skills, so your your, your special skills, your strength, agility, perception, charisma, etc., to a certain point before you can upgrade certain perks, mm. which is the which is a distinct difference between any other Bethesda game that I've I've played before. I quite like that as well. I quite like that way of working. And there's different levels to each perk. Like, for example, mm. I've got the... Uh, I'm playing as a female, so I've got a perk called uh, Aqua Girl. And I might, there might be a male equivalent, and there I don't is, know yeah. if there's different perks. So, yes. Yeah, so, if you've got the Aqua Girl one, the first one uh, gives you... It means that you don't get radiation by going in the water. Yep. And you can also breathe underwater. Uh, and the second level of that means that you're completely slightly visible whilst you're underwater as well. All right. So, it, it's different ranks have different benefits. And I don't, I've, I've not looked this up, and I, I really, really hope that there isn't, but I don't think there's that stupid 30-level cap in this game because there's no, so there's many good. perks in different ranks that I kind of want the time to level up a lot and get deep into some of them, rather than in Fallout 3, one of the problems I had with that level system was that you stopped at 30 unless you had the DLC, and it was like, I kind of feel like I've just got my character going in a direction, yeah. and now you've made me stop. Hmm. I don't think I think hopefully that is one of the lessons that they have learned in Fallout 4 is that I don't think there's a level cap in the but same again, way again Skyrim and uh, uh, Morrowind and, and all the other games that I've played from Bethesda they haven't had any caps in them so mm. it's really they weird but they've, they've also had leveled enemies as well and this is something Fallout doesn't have whereby if you meet something that's harder than you in Fallout, it's gonna kick your ass. Yeah. Well, if you yeah. meet something harder than you in um, in Oblivion, say, it'll only be a couple of levels harder than you. Right. So all the, and yeah. this was all too. So at the end, towards the end game in Oblivion, we'd be coming across bandits in full glass armor with like Daedric weapons and stuff. Yeah, yeah. No, yeah, right. yeah, yeah. Um, but yeah, I mean, as I, I, the someone in chat mentioned earlier, it's. When I try, I, I can take on the legendary 
people at the moment that are quite a few levels above me, but it takes a lot of hits and a lot of ammo to kill them. And for example, sometimes I've went back to base and got my power armor to kill them because I know that I'll be able to melee them to death or something or, or you know, run in with a minigun and blast Plus, all thousand if, rounds on them. There is also to do with, um, but again, this is down to the perks thing, but if you, if you upgrade your VAX with perception, you can see what the enemy's strengths are and different yeah. enemies respond to different kinds of attack. Also, I love that. So your synths respond to... Uh, you know, energy weapons and things like that, or, you know, different enemies like raiders, um, probably more your rough and tumble shotgun into the face kind of enemies. Oh. oh, I've just lost you all. Can you still hear us? I can hear you yeah. all, but yeah, you've all disappeared. Well. So, um, that was weird. on that note, everybody, we're going to have a quick break because uh, we're going to have to restart Skype. I think this happened to us earlier on as well. And I need a toilet because I've been drinking a few tonight and... Uh, <laughs> We'll be back. We'll be back shortly. Back shortly. Don't go anywhere, guys. Don't go anywhere. We'll uh, we'll be back. We've got plenty more to talk about and plenty more to show. Right. Hello. Sorry. Hello. As you can see, Sam and Lou are both really dark now. Um, Skype's having problems and we don't dark know why. Dark inside. Dark inside. <laughs> anyway, so where were we? We were talking about stuff and things. Uh, combat. Uh, I think but, we, were, we were talking about combat, yeah. Perks and combat, we've done all that. So let's yep. talk about, um, let, let's specifically talk about the power armor for a little bit. Yeah, okay. With, um, with, it's, it's, there's always been power armor in, uh, in the Fallout games, but I think this feels more like power armor than ever before. I don't yeah, even remember feels... the power armor in Fallout 3. It was just, it was a set of armor that you had to get training for from the Brotherhood of Steel. Yeah. Um, and then you could wear it, and it was just, it was just a bit better than other armor that you could get in the game. This is, okay. feels like, a, almost like that, um, like an Iron Man power armor suit. You feel powerful in it. Like you get, you got the, the different, um, uh, the different hood. When you've got it on, so you know you're in the power. You've got the armor display in the corner. It took me a while to figure out what the displays were because you've got little yeah. like <laughs> dial displays, and I was like, "Why is that one going down? Oh, I'm dying!" Shit. <laughs> yes. And <laughs> when you start, because this is not a spoiler to say, right at the very start of the game, one of the earliest missions is you go and get in some power armor and you fight a death claw. And this is Fallout 4's way of saying right. you're gonna start out small. Here's a taste of like, the big crazy shit that this game's got to offer. So you get in power armor, jump down off a building with a minigun, and shoot a death crow in the face as it like twats you about. Which see, is pretty cool. You see, Steve was texting me about this when he when he did it. He said, "Oh, how have you got any um, power cores yet?" I went, "I've got about three at the time." And he went, "Oh, I've only got one. I don't know where I get them from." And I said, "Oh, I've got. I don't know where. I can't remember where I got mine." And. I then realised that you're supposed to kill that first death claw with the power armor. I didn't. I just ran up to it with a pistol, got my <laughs> face ripped off. I got my face ripped off, and then um, and then realised very very shortly afterwards that that the, the power armor was just upstairs in that area. And I got it. I'd already killed the death claw. It took me ages to kill it as well. Absolutely. Doesn't ages. the death claw spawn after you've got the armor? Are you meant to go up on the roof, get the armor, you jump down off the roof? No, no. He's, That's he's, a pretty linear part of the game, isn't no, it? No, no. He spawns anywhere as soon as you come outside. But I, okay. I, 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 because I was already doing something when I went to that particular mission, I went to went off and did that. And then when I came back, I saw the death claw. And I didn't realise that he was part of that mission until well after that. But you live and learn. Yeah, I like it. But yeah, so, so I, I do like it. I think the the fusion core thing. I can understand why. It basically, like I was saying earlier, it means that you have to decide when you want to use the power armor and when not. Um, and I've actually got. I found a different. There's, there's different. Sorry, excuse me. There's different sets of it around. You can find randomly find one and go, "Ooh, I've got a fusion core. I'll just nick this power armor, get in it, and stomp around a bit and um, take it around." Now, yeah, the only way you can transport them, as far as I'm aware, is to walk them from place to place. You can't just yeah. send it. Um, well, I think got... you can send resources, but you can't send the power armor itself. You can only see yeah, between one sanctuaries. Suit. You only see one suit as well at a time. So I've actually found a second suit of power armor. I haven't got in it yet. Um, second frame, rather. I've got about mm. two or three suits worth of actual attachments 
but I haven't actually got the second power armor. It's on a, a train, a crash train inside a locked uh, cage. But at the time of oh, finding got, it, sorry, I've got three. I've got what? I've got two at Sanctuary. One which I've got my upgrades and stuff on. I've got another frame like stood next to it that I walked over there really slowly because it ran out. I was like, uh, <laughs> uh, uh, uh. you can still walk in it when it runs out of power. You just can't do anything it's, else. It's like being encumbered. Yeah, and I left one uh, in some random place. But what's good about that is the one that I've left is still on my map. I can still go and find it. It's got a little power armor symbol on it. I can still go and get it back if I want to, which is really cool as well. Unless you find another power armor suit or get in another power armor suit. Is that how it works? It's the yeah. last one that I used, so it could that could be the case. It is the last one you used. That there's, you can only see one at a time. But I know, I mean, maybe for, not for you on the console, but I know at some point someone will bring a mod out that will say these are all the power armors that you've used at some point i saw some screenshot of some guy who's got every single power armor suit in the game and he's got them all lined up in sanctuary <laughs> and there's there's about 20 of them it's ridiculous yeah that one of my like friends is like oh, got sanctuary with a load of power armor i didn't count how many but it was just basically the porch was filled with power armor that's what i want yeah I'm, <laughs> but it, wouldn't it be better though to have like one power armor or each at each uh yeah place? true actually so you can go what and get it if you need to, and yeah, you I need to be able to try and get one in Diamond City. You need them all to be autonomous, like Iron Man's. Uh, what is it, the Iron Legion? Yeah, or yeah. Something? I, the first thing I did when I went to to Diamond City was kill the radio dude. Diamond City Radio. I went into his shack and I shot him in the face because he was doing my <laughs> head in. But I've I, I I saved it beforehand. Just I wanted to see if he'd stop fucking talking on the radio, but he doesn't. Or he didn't, at least when I did it. When I come you out, you don't the... have to have. Sorry, you don't have to have the radio on though. It's not like mandatory. It, but it is on constantly in the world at some point. You know, it's always on in certain places. Apparently, if you killed three dog in Fallout Three, which I never actually saw three dog, I never went to the radio place. Um, uh, he stopped broadcasting and they replaced him with someone else on the radio. But in this one, he just keeps talking, <laughs> and it's like, oh. was it? Wasn't Three Dog part of the main quest in Fallout 3? Didn't you have to I'm go through? I'm pretty sure it was, yeah. I don't, I don't know Every if I dog. completed Fallout Ow! 3. Oh no, I must have completed Fallout 3 because I did all the Enclave stuff. Yeah, I'm pretty sure you have to go and speak to Three Dog. Oh, anyway, it doesn't know. matter. It's a We're talking about Fallout now. 4 now. Yes, Forget yeah. Fallout 3, it's in the past. Apart from when you're <laughs> it. Every step of the way. How Howling Mad Dog Reed in, in chat has just said, can you not issue power armor to settlers? That would be interesting. Probably not. But that'll be interesting. It would make sense though, because if I leave power armor suits and then they get attacked, and I'm not there, I could be like, "Well, I'm on the other side of the map, in the middle of a mission. I don't yeah. want to come and defend you. How about you just jump in my T45 suit and kick the shit out of them on, on your own?" Like, yeah, it's gonna, be a lot of sense. If, it's gonna be disappointing if you come back and there's like a load of power armor there, spare, and they're fighting them off with turnips. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> fucking muck fruits. Um, yes. Did did you see? You know the the uh, combat video I showed a while back. Did you see me shooting the minigun at the, the raider in power armor? No. You remember it? Possibly. I'm going to play it again now. But watch as you shoot him, the power, the bits of power armor fall off him. And uh, oh yes, I did see it. Yeah, yeah, I did see yeah that. No, I've seen that. It's quite cool. It is. Cool, I can't actually see any it's, video. The, the video is really. But for those who haven't played the game, yeah, when you're fighting somebody else in power armor, yeah, as you attack them, you can attack specific bits of it and wear them down, and the, and the bits will fall off, leaving the sort of power armor frame. So you've got like a like a like a I don't even know what to call it. Yeah, it's a power armor frame without any armor bits on it, but it's still got the the moving bits of the the frame of the power armor an without the sort of outer arm. Yeah, like an exoskeleton. That's the word I'm looking for. Um, so yeah, if you get fighting somebody in that, pick a specific part attack that a lot and then shoot them more once that bit's fallen off. That's yeah, how you kill them. I, I just thought it was quite cool when I first saw it. I was like, oh, that's, uh, that's pretty mint. I've, I've fought about three or four um, guys in power armor and they've, they've all been difficult, but that that one in particular I was shooting there, I, got, I said I, got, I had to go and get power armor myself. It must have been quite a, high level, quite a higher level than me. It, I think it lives up to its name now, power armor. You feel powerful when you're in it and there's also different upgrades you can do to the power armor itself so if like chris you want to like go smack people in the face you can upgrade your power armor to be very powerful at melee attacks yeah um things like that so if you want to go and grapple with death claws mano a mano 
and you can do that. It's a viable option for you now. You, you're still mental, in my opinion, but you can do it if you want to. I, I do like the introduction to the power armor where you have to jump off a roof of a building. That's quite a cool little touch. Like a, yeah, I'm I'm proper hard now. I can jump off buildings. I, I've done that yeah, a few times, yeah. and I've jumped I've jumped down from there's a um, I can't remember the name of it, but it's a quarry. You have to empty the quarry of water. I don't know if you've seen it or been to it. You empty the quarry yeah. of water, and then later on you come back, and there's loads of raiders in there. But I jumped down from the top of the quarry into the bottom of the quarry with power armor and it's like yes it felt so good but it also damages people around you as you, you land which is pretty cool yeah. does it that's mm -hmm. cool I, you can get a jetpack for your power armor you can upgrade it with a jetpack you can upgrade it with oh, um loads of different that. you know loads of different extra cool things it's it's meant well i'm sure that it, one of the other things is this sort of tied into the power armor but it's also a little bit about the world and how um They've sort of addressed a lot of the ways of getting around the world. There's lots of uh, overpasses and stuff, but there's people made settlements on the overpasses with little elevators that you can go up and down in. And I was on my way to clear out some raiders from a place randomly, like you know, to do some, uh, you know, there's lots of missions that say go and clear out the raiders from this whatever. And I went up there and had a look, and there was some power armor up there. So I got in the power armor, jumped off the overpass, down into this group of raiders, and it was like what you said, and it was just like, oh, what's going on, bitches? It feels a bit armor. pathetic really though, when you've got power armor and you haven't got a heavy weapon. Like, if you've got a pistol and you're in power armor, it's yeah. like, come on, I need a flamer or a <laughs> junk, you know, junker yeah. or whatever. You've got the basic pipe pistol. Think, 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 think. Like, shit. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yes, uh, I, I like it, and I'm, I'm glad it's in there. I, I hope I find... I mean, I haven't got loads of cores, but I hope I find more. It sounds like you've been doing a lot of missions, Sam. I've been doing a lot of the... Not the main missions, but I did a lot of the um, the settlement missions, so, you know... Uh, so have I, though. Have dude, you done the, the castle the, one? I haven't done that one yet. I've been, if, every time you do, a, you do a mission, like, to do a settlement or you help somebody out... It gives you another one to do, so I've just yeah. been doing a lot of them. So have you done the castle one yet? Because that, that comes up at some point. I've done about... I've done everything up to the castle, and, and there's, you have to go and help him take over a castle or something? No, I haven't done that one yet. But so I have that... been doing other missions, because there's lots of side missions. Plus, in that Bethesda place. fashion, you wander into a place, and it opens a mission for you. Like, you happen to wander into a certain building, find a hollow tape that says this, and you go and find the location on the hollow tape. And then you're in another mission, like a but random mission that you didn't know. I've done that maybe three or four times. This this that I'm showing now is one in particular. I just walked into a place called Hubris Comics, and it was a whole side mission about the um, the Silver Shadow or something like that, who's a comic character, and they're trying to make a film of him. And there's raiders, and no, there's ghouls in here actually. But it is it's cool. I really enjoy that, and and I know that's what Bethesda games are about. But I don't know. There's something. There's something really intriguing about this game in that every single place that I go there's at least another two or three places that I can see locally or in the distance that look intriguing and make me want to go and see them and this takes us back to um, Lou's criticism of, of The Witcher 3 for example I, I, I agree when it comes to when I remind myself of how good Bethesda are at doing this, at making you want to explore and want to deviate from... I, the amount of times I've head towards a mission, I've highlighted a mission in my Pip-Boy, I've head towards it, and I've been distracted by God knows how many buildings, God knows how many little raider outposts, a, a settlement that I've run over, and it, or a super mutants that are attacking somebody. It's like, for fuck's sake! I walked into the middle of Boston, I was on the way to Diamond City just to start the Diamond City quests, and uh, oh, I assume I'm starting. I haven't actually been there yet because I've been distracted. Fucking alien ship flies over my head and lands and crashes somewhere. And I'm oh. like, where the fuck's that come from? I heard this. <laughs> can't see any flames in the distance or anything, but I know the rough direction it's in. And I'm like, I'm trying to find that at the moment. And I'm like, ah! And then you watch us walk around in Boston, and there's so many little things to do. It's unbelievable how how yeah. densely packed it is, though, considering it's a wasteland. I wanted to say this about, because I forgot about this, I should have been taking notes as I was playing. One of my big criticisms of Fallout 3, that I think we talked about this on the show before, is I said when you got into the city centre of Washington, it just felt like more nothingness. Yeah. Like there was a couple of buildings in Goomin, there's so much crap. 
like in the center of Boston, there's just so many buildings you can go in that connects to other buildings and there's like ins and outs, apartment buildings where raiders or super mutants have set themselves up or you go into the basement to find a horde of ghouls and they've got some weird shit down there. Like, it feels like the city in this game actually has a lot in it and it feels like a real danger zone. You go in there and you're getting shot at by raiders, mutants and mauled by ghouls all at the same time and you're like, ah! Which is good. It's what it should be like, and they're That's all attacking. The city center would be like, and they're all attacking each other as well. So it's it's yeah, it's, mm. it's it feels alive, doesn't it? It feels like it's it, yeah. it, it feels a lot more interesting than Fallout Three ever did. In fact, I think it feels more interesting than Skyrim did as well. I have to be honest. Might just be that I've, yeah. it's new game syndrome that I don't know. There was one mission I did. I went into the Museum of Witchcraft, and Boston is well known for its. Um, Boston, the Boston Sailor, Witch Trials, yeah, well, same mm. Massachusetts kind of area, but it's the whole uh, Witch Trials and the you know the Crucible, uh, the the book and the play is set there as well. Um, I studied that at school, so when we went over, um, when me and my my mum went over to Boston years years ago, my dad used to work there. Um, we went went to doing a load of witch stuff, and it was really cool all the all the all that lore and history. Um, but there's anyway, there's a museum of witchcraft that I walked into in. Uh, uh, I can't even remember where I heard about it, but a, a mission popped up in my pit boy. I went into it, and it was it was completely different from any other mission. I walked into the into the building, and it was there was nothing in it. It was just empty apart from a few bits you could pick up. And then as I started walking into the building, this fucking monster noise came from upstairs, and I was like, oh, "What the fuck's going on here?" And uh, I go a little bit further in, and then bodies start falling from the ceiling and stuff. It's proper tense. And uh, eventually, you go upstairs. I'm, I won't spoil it too much, but there's a there's a there's basically a massive legendary death claw in there that you have to kill. Um, but there's other stuff as well that come from that mission. But it's really again just randomly walked into it, and it was it was a whole thing in itself. I haven't done any of the main mission. I don't care that my son's been abducted for God's sake. You know, <laughs> that's, that's, that's the agency versus uh, urgency thing, isn't it? It's the whole what the hell? You know, I'm supposed to be chasing after my son who's been abducted by what raiders or scientists? I'm not sure. Should we ever He's talk about this stuff? Yeah, I mean, side missions, stories. Yeah, I'm happy to talk about any of them. What you've just said there is actually how I feel about it. Now, I've read a lot of reviews that have said this has got the best story of any of the Fallout games, and, and Skyrim well. as well. Mm. But I... It's almost like you don't want that kind of a weight on you at the start of the game. You want to be able to just wake up and explore the wilderness rather than be straight away put on the gotta chase your son thing. And I feel the same as you. It's like, I don't even want to do that. I'm just gonna have a look around and start building the town and you've talk got, to people you've... and You've got to appreciate that reviews, reviewers tend to, they, what, they have to finish a game before they're allowed to give it a score out of 10. Um, mm. And I only realised, again, this very recently, I've been reading a review for Metal Gear Solid 5, and uh, in pl official PlayStation mag, they didn't give it a review one month because they hadn't completed it. They'd only played the first chapter or the first section of the game. Yeah, I, I read that as well. And then they gave it a score the, the 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 month after because they actually got a full copy and they could actually finish the game. So reviewers have to finish a game, so that's why they focus on the story. That doesn't mean that the rest of the game isn't more interesting. But what, what I mean is what... that... It... It's it's a heavy burden to lay you with at the start of the game, like mm. it kind of almost spoils the fact that you you just kind of there's a, there's a lot to be said for any kind of story that begins with the protagonist waking up and figuring out what to do. Mm. That's a really cool story trope that I don't think is in any way hackneyed or overdone yet, and uh, I think yeah. games like this could really do with that sort of stuff rather than trying to put you on this kind of blood trail straight from the beginning. Well, it starts out actually. It's it's a it's a it's a it takes a really strong step forward in one direction and takes a bit of a misstep in the other. I think having this the, the kid be alive is fine, but that is something they could easily they could make. What I would I think would have been better is if they made you think the kid was dead. You step out into this world and you're like, oh, I've got nothing to like tie me down. And then, then you, you see the Minutemen. You find the Minutemen, and then you think that's the main quest, and they're like, oh, we're going to rebuild the Wasteland, and you go, oh, I can get behind that. Then you find out your son's alive, and then you go after. But I've come out, and the son being alive is meant to be your main focus, and I've done nothing towards that. No. I think I've met one bloke in Diamond City who said, oh, I might have some information for you, and I've not I, even been to speak to him I, yet. 
I, I've met probably the same bloke, and I just and you've got options not to say anything about your son, and it's like I've just went meh. <laughs> it's yeah. like you know, I'm, he's my dad. Uh, every time he talks about him, you know, we're not hang on. I'm his dad. Well, here's the thing. Here's the, here's the difference. In Fallout Three, your dad is the one that had gone missing, but going out as a youngster and finding your own path in the world thematically makes more sense. Even if your dad, you still need to find him. You're still finding your own two feet as a person because yeah, yeah. you went to the, you leave Vault when you when you're 19 in that game, right? So you're a, you're essentially a teenager out in the world finding out what kind of person you're going to be in this world. The fact that you're looking for your dad, it feels okay to put that off as you go around and you might want to go and investigate things. In this, I feel like as a as a mother, I should really be looking for my kid. But yeah, I'm yeah, you're more fun female, doing the other shit. I'm doing the other shit in the game because I enjoy it. So no. yeah, I totally agree with Lou on that. I think that it's it's a good idea for a story, but they could have framed it or paced it differently than they have done. But we don't really know if that if it matters that much because if everybody's saying yeah. it's such a good story, then there must it must be a it must have been a good decision. Maybe it pays off later when you finally meet your son. He's like grown up, and he goes, "Why have you been fanning around for five hundred hours and yeah. not come looking for me?" That's what I mean. Because we don't. Cause, I yeah. want. I want. I want people in a game to acknowledge the fact that I haven't spent I've spent three days running around in buildings killing ghouls instead of doing what I should have been doing you know mm. but mind you you don't know how long it is after your son what, was I, abducted this is we're sort of getting into slight spoiler territory here but it's this is all stuff that happens in like the first 15 minutes of the game so it isn't that bad but yeah you don't does it they they you get your son gets taken from you, you get woken up from cryosleep, the son gets taken and you get put back under, so you don't know what, what that time lapse is, which is why I might think that the kid might be a grown-up when you, by the time you Well, you know, come that's, out, you know like, it's 200 years since you were put in the vault, since the war, but that's yes, it, that's you do, all but you know. Don't, you, don't, you don't know at what point the son was taken out before you were taken out. Exactly. You don't know what the intervene. It could have been 10 minutes, could have been 20 years, for yep. you know. So, yeah. Your character is looking for a baby because that's all that he or she knows the child as. But I, my personal theory is, and I haven't, I've kept myself completely in the dark about the story. Um, yeah, yeah, same. Is, yeah. I think, I think, I think the kid might be a grown up by so, now. Howling Mad Dog in chat said uh, something. He's very, very vocal tonight. Howling Mad Dog, thank you very much for I contributing. Think, I think it might be one of my childhood friends. Cool. Um, <laughs> yeah, it turns out the longer you take to find him, the more bottle caps you have to pay for his care. <laughs> I quite, <laughs> quite like that. As the, to be fair, the more that a game acknowledges my gameplay, the better I feel the game is. The, the better I feel that the developers have done the job of the you know the immersion aspect of it. And this is we are getting into the immersion topic. I wanted to talk about as well. What's that like? Mm. How do you feel about the immersion? Because to me, they've got almost everything right with this bugs and problems with the interface and things like that aside this game they seem to have got the 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 whole feel of being someone who well you were you were duped as well at the very beginning of the game weren't you into into being in a vault to go into to go into the vault would you rather have stayed on the surface and been nuked no but do you, you know <laughs> you, you got that didn't you you got that you were duped into into going into a vault and being a did you read the terminal, the overseer's terminal inside the vault? Yeah, yeah, no, I know, I read all that. I did read that. Sorry, Lee, I did read that. But. Can I just have a quick rant about the terminals? Please let us just have all the text on the screen and not have to bloody wait for it to all roll down or press a button to do um, it. Oh, of course, yeah, press a button to do it. Yeah, uh, I, yeah I, but you, can't you, do that, it. you press the wrong button and you go back a uh, menu and you, you, uh, oh, yeah. just, just stop it. We don't need to see uh, that stupid animation. That's I, another I, UI slight little bugbear I think I, I agree with you on that it's a little bit grating you sort of get used to it after a while and I think it's the same as it was in Fallout 3 but it feels like yeah I don't know why I don't know why this is it's like come on just fucking it's, it's cool the first me. time you see it maybe I just uh, 75 hours later ju just witnessed a bug by the way I just accidentally that highlighted uh, an enemy on the top floor of this building uh, a glowing one and uh, you know the irradiated ghouls the glowing yeah. ones you're not supposed to know he's there because he's hidden behind a, a screen right at the top of the, the the building and 
I highlighted him by accident as I was walking up a stair. So it ruined the whole surprise. It whole, ruined the whole suspense <laughs> of getting to the final room in the whole bloody building. Anyway. And those glowing ones are not no joke. Well, <laughs> I, I killed remember. him pretty quickly, to be fair. But I, uh, I, did, have, I did have Strong with me. My um, Have you got Strong, by the way? The... I, haven't, I haven't even met him yet. I, I know, I've seen you've got him, but I've, not even, I've not come across if, a nice... Do you want to know where he is? He's, it takes a while to get him. No, I'll, you... find him. Okay, I'll find okay. him. Okay, okay. Fair enough. I'll find him on my own. I, again, it, it was it was another quest that I accident. No, it did actually pop up in my Pip Boy, um, but it'll be in your Pip Boys as well if you've been to Diamond City. So that's all I'm Speaking saying. Speaking of immersion, um, the dog in the room is the fact that well, I don't, I can't speak to the companions, but on at least on normal difficulty, dog me is invincible, which is both good and bad. Like in, in, the, in Fallout Three, dog me would go off on his own and get killed by ants it felt like all the time when I had nothing to do with it I was like for the love of fuck dog me stop going and fighting <laughs> the amount of like, times I reloaded my save without me there yeah to the point where I was just like fuck off dog me I don't want you like yep. go back to the vault and wait for me there and just left him there forever um, but in this game he physically is he's invincible so well, I've had these super mutants come up to me with a mini nuke and blow themselves up and dog me goes Ugh, and limps around a bit and then he's alright <laughs> again I don't mind that I really don't mind that. I'd rather that than the the dog shit that dog meat was in <laughs> Fallout Three. He really was awful. In fact, all of your companions are awful in Fallout Three. They still yeah. are, though, aren't they? I mean, they're, well, they're still stupid thing. It's like it's, it's almost like a re recompense for for the fact that the whole shit is that they can't be killed. The, the shit and they're awesome. It depends how you equip them as well. I mean, I've got armor on dog meat now, so he's he's pretty good. He, he and and I've got a perk where he um, grabs hold of enemies and distracts them essentially, which is really really good because that means I can then yeah. get a headshot on them while he's distracting them. And he quite often, once an enemy's on the floor, he'll quite often finish them off as well, which is good. Yeah, and I like that. I, I have to be honest. The only reason I've got strong with me most of the time is because he can carry a fuck ton. That's the only reason I've got him with me. <laughs> Because this was the reason in Fallout 3, wasn't it? They, they basically just pack me up for you yeah. to carry all your shit. I didn't think about it with dog meat, though. For some reason, I thought, he's a dog. Don't want to give him... I never, ever traded with him, and then I've, I've realised since I got strong that I could probably do the same with dog meat. <laughs> with dog. Yeah. How do you... I don't figured out how you equip things, because I found dog armour, and I've traded it with him. You but trade it, and then you have, to, you have to highlight it in his inventory, and I press T on my keyboard, so there'll be a key on it. It says on the bottom. The bottom of the screen. Oh, right, fair enough. I'm just I probably haven't been paying attention too much. Yeah, it's it's easy to miss. Um, like when you go on the map view, have you got the local leader perk? Have it, I know you won't, Lou. But no, I'm, I'm, I'm. It's my next. It's on my list. The next. The next upgrade I'm going to do is that one. Because once you've got that, you can set up trade routes, which it tells you between settlements. Yeah. So you can you can share. I need that. Yeah, you can share your inventory. So I I basically put everything in. Um, one settlement excuse me and then i've got all my other settlements have uh trade routes to them excuse me sorry. yeah um but once once you've done that then you can you can just use everything from from uh, sanctuary for example i've got everything going to sanctuary and i drop everything off there all my junk goes in that work that workshop um, but there's sorry, there's one option. Once you've figured, again, I only saw this yesterday, but I've had it for about three or four days now. Um, if if I press C on my keyboard when I'm in map view, you can see all of the trade routes that are going between all your all your cities, which oh, I didn't okay. realise, and it would have been really fucking helpful earlier on if I'd known that. You know, I'll try and keep an eye out for that. Or I think I think sometimes with this game as well, and you took we've we've touched on the help files. There's a lot of help files, and I think a lot of the mechanics they they're very vague about what they're going to what what's going to be a tutorial and what you're just going to have to figure out by pressing random buttons or going through the help files so there's a quite a few things um like the functions of how the hacking works i'd forgotten how it worked in fallout 3 uh for, so for example in the hacking if you say likeness one to a word like stop uh, that means that it has to be the letter the correct letter and in the right place now I was yeah. going. It's just it's just the correct letter. So for like the first oh god three hours of the game, I was hacking terminals. Going, you're lying to me. <laughs> That's clearly got an O in it, and you're saying it's not the right one. Fuck you. That I didn't be... figure out for ages that that was what was going on. That would be almost impossible to get right, though. 
I know it was. I was like, this is the most ridiculous hacking, hacking video I've ever in my life. Especially when you do master terminals or advanced terminals. It's like, yeah, yeah they're fucking words that are about 10 years long. But this is, here's my point, right? Let's say you're new to the Fallout and you, like, because for me, Fallout 3 is my first one. Hmm. Let's say Fallout 4 is your first one. You jump in. The game doesn't tell you that stuff when you start hacking. You have to look it up in the help file now. No, I just fine, tell you when you hack. I don't think it. I the don't first time it, you do it, it, it does. It does. does it yeah, did, the first time you hack, it mentions it. If I did, it didn't notice it. It has that Grand Theft Auto thing of like, yeah, it popped up for twenty seconds in the corner or at the bottom. Yeah. But I was busy trying to actually do the thing. I think you're giving so it a bit too much. Help messages. You're giving it a bit much too much too much credit there. Twenty seconds is a long time. It was more like three or four seconds it popped up. But yeah, you're <laughs> right. So yeah, th- th- that's that's a little bit of an immersion issue in that certain mechanics and things. While it might have told you, like I'm not new to this game or to this kind of game and I clearly missed out on a little bit of the hacking thing and I had to look it up in the help files because I thought there must be something else to this so I looked it up and it said here's the details of hacking Hmm. now that's probably true for a few of the things in the game that map thing you just talked about now there's a lot of shit in this game that you might not even you might miss completely if you don't go through those help files and that feels a little bit like having to read a book to play a game yeah, and there's, there's there's ways around that. There's ways they're going to design the game more organically to get around that. Since we're talking about immersion, having to read through help files, I'd rather they had history files on the lore of the world. I'd happily sit and read through those rather than mm-hmm. reading. Here's the best way to shoot someone in the face or whatever. Like, you know, there's cer- a little bit of an issue. The certain he's that glowing one, by the way. If you can see it, he's behind that wall there. But I already know he's there, so it's a bit like he's not going to jump out at me, is he? Um, no, it's it's certain games I, I read all the law and I get really into it. Certain other games I just cannot be asked with it. But this one I am. I'm reading every single line in every terminal and every. I'm listening to every single holotape and reading every note that I see. And you know, I'm trying to immerse myself. And I find it, I find it really immersive. I find it like I'm. I feel like I'm in the game and it's brilliant. I love it. And I don't want to ever stop playing it. I've lost you again. Oh, no. Can you guys turn your video on again, please? Sorry, guys. Sorry for all this uh, ridiculousness that's going on. It's all Skype's fault. It is all Luckily, the dark fault. bit, the dark thing does seem to go away after a few It minutes. did, yeah, last time, so hopefully yeah, it'll do it again. Um, Maybe it's an update Skype issue, but it's just... Uh, anyway. Maybe. If you guys, after, after the show, can just check your Skype updates for me. I'm, I'm definitely up to date, I think, but... Anyway... Any other any other stuff on immersion that anyone's noticed? Because the, the good things, bad things. Because I find I find this game is way more immersive than the last one, and it's it feels a, it, probably as immersive as if not more so than Skyrim. I think I really think that the the junk collection stuff really helps with the um, immersion. Because mm. uh, cause you, you're doing what it, you know, you're collecting junk to salvage and to make stuff, and the settlement stuff really helps with the immersion as well. So I think I think they help. I, I think I think that's probably. I that. agree, and I think the way you level up as well, the your um, your mod your modding perks and things like that. Again, Lou, you haven't got into this yet, but when you get into the certain mods or crafting things, like for example, being able to craft. You get get better things out of dismantling stuff that you find. Uh, it's something that you can do as well, I believe. So yeah. that that to me is that is the epitome of immersion because that basically means if I was in the wasteland and I found a camera, I would try and take it apart to find the screws inside and use those screws to do something else that helps me survive. That is exactly mm. what you would do. So I, I really really like that. I think that's actually one of the best things about this game, even though it seems something so almost trivial and small like picking up toy cars and teddy bears and stuff they have a use and you can reconstitute things and recycle them well you know? that that happens that, that'll be happening for you now sam it's it, it happens automatically you put junk into your workstations at your settlements and then automatically as you create things as you make walls and make turrets and stuff it uses that junk yeah. or it uses it breaks those junks junk into components automatically for you you don't have to worry about breaking it down yourself um it already it does that automatically so don't worry about it um yes anyway so let's move on to the next subject 
it's pretty much the last subject. I mean, uh, there's a few that, that we can talk about, but um, the bugs in the game. Now, has anybody experienced any game-breaking bugs to start off with? Yes, I think a lot of people experience no, you, the... Um, no, you guys. I know that other people have. No, I experienced it as well. This is what I mean, but it's, it's not just me. Um, a lot of people experience the same thing, which was the game... Like, the character sticking in place when you use a terminal. Okay. So... There was the famously the first terminal I use in Vault 111. Um, if your frame rate's too high, then your character sticks in place. Right. So Forever. as soon as you come out of the terminal, you can't move. You're just stuck in front of the terminal like this. But you've seen the frame. And you've got to close the game. You've seen the frame rate um, issues to do with if the frame rate is faster, 140, uh, 140 frames a second. That means that you shoot quicker, you melee quicker, and you run quicker. Yeah, these are books that get. These are books that you would expect to see in DOS games yeah. from 1987, not a game from 2015. So people, people who have are running it in 640 by 480 at 3,000 frames a second could probably get from one side of the map to the other in about 10 seconds. Well, it's frame locked, <laughs> but there's other there's other problems with it. Like uh, this is the reason why I have to run mine in borderless window because I want the V-Sync from running a window. Without the V-Sync mouse lag that you get from when it full screen. You see, I'm running V. I think I've got V-Sync on, um, and I'm not getting the V-Sync mouse lag because I've done a lot of tweaking in the config to try and alleviate that. I'm pretty sure yes. that's the case because anyway, I'm locked at 60 FPS, even though I am running, I can run it about 80 or 90 FPS. Yeah, um, I, mine runs ridiculously faster. Uh, the, the the engine's on all maximum settings, and it's. Obviously, because I've got a modern card, it's, it all runs really fast. See, I'm running slightly higher than 1080p, so sometimes I drop to 30 or 40 frames a second. Um, mm. I've got everyth all, everything, but I think t I've turned shadows down onto high instead of ultra, um, but most of, the, most of it's running pretty, pretty well. View distance when I'm at the top of a tower in the middle of Boston tends to destroy things. Um, but you you would think that they would have got around that by now. I don't understand why that it, that particular thing is causing problems. It's a kind of a limitation of the engine. Even the Skyrim engine isn't really made for that kind of built up stuff. That's more a GTA Five optimization. Yeah, but anyway, it's oh, LOD or whatever. It's not. Yeah, I'm 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 dropping. I've dropped to about thirty five frames a second at the very very least, which is still playable. Um, and that's not when, when nothing's going on, but I'm just looking in certain places out of buildings. Um, just a bit weird. Any other bugs? Are you have you experienced any bugs, Sam? Um, only little ones, just like the occasional clipping through things. Dog meat's clipped through a couple of um, items and walls. Nothing major though. That's again, this is pretty standard Bethesda. Yeah, yeah. Stuff for me. People clipping, people having their leg stuck through a door and stuff like that is a bit like, oh, you know, it's, a yeah. bit, it's almost like it's almost like quaint and charming. Like, the, oh, the, I'd almost miss it if it wasn't there. In a weird there was way. once where I I got up out of a chair. I I accidentally sit down on chairs all the fucking time. By the way, it's driving me up the wall because hmm. I'm I'm using everything just so I'm picking shit up all the time. Uh, accidentally click on a chair, sat down, and it's like half an hour for the animation, half an hour to get up again, and it's like no, just. Just don't, just don't do that to me. <laughs> but anyway, um, I've, I once I got up out of a chair that I accidentally sat on, and I, I, I ended up in the middle of a pillar, and it was third person, so I just went into this pillar and just stood there, and I, I could move straight out of it. I got I clipped out of it. That was fine. I've actually experienced a few bugs. Um, one in particular keeps happening to me, and it's, I'd say it was game breaking because I can't play the game once it's happened. Um, Occasionally, and I don't know what what makes it happen. My interface, the UI, so Pip Boy, and um, the HUD's still there, but the interface disappears. I can't see my Pip Boy. Everything works normally. Like my mouse goes over things, and it's still um, I can still click on things, etc. But I can't see it. And my guns, I can't see my guns, and I can't see anything to do with it it's really weird it's just like it disappears for a bit yeah i've seen that one uh, mentioned a few times as well and and then once that and i have to restart the game to get it i have to quit to desktop and uh, restart the game one other thing that's happened to me as well is when i've been equipping items certain items and specifically um, raider leathers or raider because chris loves his raider leathers 
It's not Raider leathers. It's uh, there's, there's road leathers, and then there's a Raider outfit type thing, undergarments. Anyway, whenever I equip um, those onto one or two, I've, it's happened with one or two different settlers. It just quits the desktop weirdly, uh, and no, no crash, no event log, nothing. Just quits the desktop. Um, and it's it hasn't caught me out yet in terms of saves because I'm saving every five seconds in the game because you know what Bethesda games are like. You, you don't know if a death clause around the next corner, you know that kind of thing. So it's probably better you do that. But it's a bit annoying. I'm sure they'll fix that maybe hopefully. But there are also other bugs that people are, have been uh, uh, experiencing. There's one major game game breaking breaking bug. If you, after a certain point in the story, if you fast travel to a particular town, and I can't remember the top name of it, I'll paste a, a link into chat, um, you, uh, it, it freezes or it quits the desktop, and then you can't reload your save, and you can't, and some people can't reload previous saves either, which is really bad, and it's like Jesus, Jesus yeah. So I'm staying off the main story until I fix that one because I don't want that to happen. Uh, knowing me, I'll be one of the people who doesn't have who. who can't load previous saves as well. Um, That's is that bad. a PC only issue? Has that been reported on um, Xbox no, no, it, and PlayStation well, as well? I'll paste the link, and uh, it does say that it's Xbox and P uh, Xbox and PS4 as well. So there's a link in chat now. Um, it's in the document highlighted if you need to look at it, Sam. But there's there's loads of fixes on there. The, most of them PC related fixes, so you have to edit this mm. and do that and hack this and that. I'm at I imagine they'll patch it, but it's still one of those. It's been reported on the Bethesda forums, things, so yeah, um, they'll they'll be on it. You know, they always do gen tend to fix these big game breaking things. But apart from that, I haven't really seen that many issues. I've not had, which is good. I mean, as I said, considering the size of the game and the amount of things that you can do in the games, I'm impressed so far. I was actually up until maybe yesterday or the day before whenever this bug was reported, I was actually thinking Jesus, no game breaking bugs for, bugs for uh, Bethesda again, that's amazing that's the first time they've done it if you remember oh. um, f uh, Skyrim when that came out that had major frame rate issues didn't it with uh, every platform yeah, I, mean, I, the frame rate, was terrible. Um, I don't know what the frame rate is on the PlayStation 4 version but it's been pretty it's been consistent the whole time I've been playing it, I've, I've not 30. had any. Um... Sorry, I think it's capped to thirty on the consoles. It's possible that it is. I wouldn't be surprised, but um, it's been consistent at the very least. Because I remember in Fallout Three and Skyrim, and I'm not sure if Oblivion had this as well. But if there's too much stuff going on, it just becomes like stop mo, like an old stop motion video, like uh, 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 like really bad. Mm -hmm. And I've not had that yet. And I've been in some pretty hairy situations with a lot of stuff happening. So. Yeah, that's quite good. I'm glad they've, not, they've got that ironed out at least. But I've seen something in a document here about 140,000 players stuck in Vault 111. Yeah, is that um, a bug? Is that a bug issue? Yes and no. Now I think there's there's a bug where uh, that Lou just reported where terminals have stuck people, but there will the, those stats will also include people where. Um, I was going to get onto the stats later, but yeah, this this one particular stat will also include people that have started the game and then just not played it. They bought it. You know, a lot of people oh. do that. I do that some, with some games sometimes. Um, They're probably all the left-handed players or people who tried to rebind the keys to something other than WASD. Could be, yeah. Could be anything. Anybody. There aren't that many. There aren't that many evil lefties in the world, Lou. Don't worry about <laughs> it. <laughs> Sinister. <laughs> so, um, I, I've got a few other topics in here we can talk about. I mean, we're, there's a lot of Easter eggs in the game, but I haven't really come across many yet. I don't know if you guys have. I've come across, I don't know if it's an Easter egg, I've come across a, a weird, a bloody weird thing. If you come across a, a, a mission called the the Freedom Trail, where you've got to like follow this trail. No. In the, in the, there's, uh, I encountered an enemy there that was very strange and intimidating. You, you'll probably get there at some point, because it was, it was, was a transgender a super mutant. Um, almost. <laughs> <laughs> Intrigue, uh, you're going to play it more. Anybody that's got to the Freedom Trail bit will know this enemy that I'm talking about and how like strange and confusing it is when you first encounter it. It's not that weird, but it's weird enough that I was like, what the hell is this? Anyway, that's okay. just, I wasn't sure if anyone else had gotten there yet. There's lots of little nods to other games and there's lots of little nods to 
uh, various Americana and that kind of thing. It's it's not something I'm usually. I mean, I'm not one of those people who'll try and chase all of the Easter eggs because um, they they tend to put a lot of effort into putting them into games these days. Whereas it used to be they used to be Easter eggs. They didn't used to be features of the game like they are now. You know, it's hard to explain that. I, t- I suppose Easter eggs used to be cool back in the day, but now I just can't be asked. <laughs> well, Easter eggs used to ju- in games mostly be. You're not supposed to be here. Yeah, Messages yeah, on a yeah. wall where you're not supposed to be. Hmm. Um, so performance, we've talked about performance on PC. Generally, it's okay, generally. I mean, I've got a beast of a PC, but it still drops a frame rate. But I'm I'm in 1440p, so I can't really be complaining about that. I should have hmm. two graphics cards, really, for the, the rig I'm running. Um, console versus PC, I don't imagine there are many many differences these days. I mean, I bet the textures are a bit lower quality on PC, on, on console, maybe. Well, the textures in this game out. are not, they're not massively high quality textures anyway. They've not gone for a photorealistic no. look, really. So I don't think there's probably that much difference, really. I won't, I won't imagine. Uh, so, yeah. That that's probably about it. I mean, we can. Has, I don't suppose any uh, Lou, sorry, in particular, has uh, tried any mods or anything like that yet. No, I haven't. No. I've had a quick look on Nexus mods, and there are people doing things, but obviously nothing's going to be very mature yet. Oh, look at this! I opened the page up, and the first thing I see is a pair of tits. Oh yes, I saw <laughs> that. Yeah, yeah. There's a, a naked mod. Um, of, course. Uh, of course, there's a naked mod. In the I mean, like, of course, there's a naked mod. I like the naked mods. Like the naked Do you know what? Mods. <laughs> it's at the point now where Bethesda might as well just have that be an option in the game because it's going to happen like two days after they release it, it anyway. Used to. This is the <laughs> ironic thing. If you play Daggerfall or Arena, the um, the character loadout screen, when you take all the clothes off, they're not wearing any underwear. So you had the nuts hanging around. Yeah. As, you, as you're getting axes smashed into them. Let, let, let's, let's be sensible here. Dog meat is already naked. So yeah, let's, let's leave it at that. And the ghouls are naked as well. Some of them are. <laughs> I really like the design of the ghouls this time around. They, they look a lot of them look really like warped and disfigured. I really like that. Just as a little side note. <laughs> I like the uh, I like the the ghouls as well. Not the feral the feral ghouls and the normal ghouls. The ghouls look quite cool. Um, yeah, you know, in the cities, etc. You also get ghoul settlers as well, which I think is quite cool. What if you were a ghoulist? Yeah, think... What if you're a ghoulist and the, s- the ghoul settles? Can you just murder them? A ghoulist? Is, there a, is that a thing? Well, you know, whatever. It's someone who doesn't like ghouls. You know, it's a thing, though, isn't it? In, a... in the Fallout universe, it's... a lot of places don't well, it... like... It, it does. It seems like a lot of people... The, the big the big thing, the big prejudice that's in this game seems to be synths against synths. Whereas I remember in Fallout 3, there was a lot of stuff tied to being against ghouls like the whole Tenpenny Tower side quest yeah. was entirely about people who were like essentially ghoul racists yeah <laughs> it's, a, it's, Correct, it's kind of a slavery allegory isn't it it's sort of like a well not really slavery but it's not slavery but racism because they weren't really because yeah, the ghoul because there's the, there's the what's the word for ghouls that aren't they're just ghouls aren't they I guess they're not there's feral ghouls, ghouls and feral, feral ghouls yeah, feral ghouls are the ones that attack you. Ordinary ghouls that can have this but conversation not, with them. The, people are, are racist towards them because they think, or I'm not sure if it's true or not, but their normal ghouls can go feral as well. Because feral ghouls I are imagine, just... I think it's just about a time. Like, because the, 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 according to the law, I believe the ghouls, they're obviously infertile. They are people that were exposed to radiation and have literally been alive since the bombs went off. So most all those ghouls and the feral ghouls have been alive for like two hundred over two hundred years, and I think the idea is the feral ghouls' minds have deteriorated. They're yeah. all people that were exposed to the blasts, yeah. And the ones that have still got their minds are the ordinary ghouls mm. who were been deformed by radiation, but their minds are still intact. And the feral ghouls. I had no idea that that was the. Bad. I had no idea that that was the story behind the ghouls. I didn't realise that they were basically people who whose ageing had stopped because of the blast. Do you know the main yeah, story believe- behind Fallout? Not really. So I didn't know that part. In t- I think it was 2077 or something, uh, the Great War that is referred to absolutely everywhere in the world was superpower. The, the alternate history in uh, in Fallout is that 
technology has advanced. It was the 1950s, an alternate 1950s America, and technology has advanced uh, much further than we have. But in certain areas, there were, yeah, no, but there was no miniaturization of technology like we have. So what's mm. happened is they've they've evolved um, much larger machines and much larger technology that requires much more resources. So the Great War occurred because all of the superpowers were vying over... I mean, obviously I'm paraphrasing a lot here, but all of the superpowers were vying over the last few oil fields, the last few bits of natural resources on the planet. And then what happened is the Great War was, I think it was a three-hour war, but it was everybody fired nukes at the same time and the basically the entire surface of the planet was terraformed and reformed because of all the massive amounts of energy that was uh, that was released at that time so after that and that's what you know obviously we experienced the beginning or the actual the full um uh great war during the beginning of fallout 4 because you know you get sent into the vault very 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 early on uh, and then the vault people don't come out of the vaults for i think i think it's something like 20 or 30 years until after that but some vaults don't open to like till 200 years after the great war so the great war wasn't that great it wasn't like you know 10 years 15 years long it was three yeah, hours long war. yeah yeah um but everyone refers to that and then after that everything <laughs> is post-war uh, and yeah so that's the main story behind fallout it's it's basically well, i understood uh, that bit i thought, I thought you're going to shed some light on something else there i understand the basic premise is it's post-apocalyptic yeah but that well, was the, that's all, the main story behind it that's the fact yeah the yeah. ghouls are not mutants ghouls well they are mutants but mut like i think the, the implication is i know you don't see any female ones but i think super you mutants you do i've got a few a couple of female ones in some of my settlements all right fair enough i just i think super mutants like procreate my alerts pro all the other mutated creatures are creatures that live and have a normal life cycle but the ghouls are the same humans that were in the blast that hmm. somehow survived the radiation but became ghouls i, I didn't i didn't know that i didn't know that they were the same ghouls i just i don't i, I don't even know what i assumed about them i have to there's, be honest there's something in fallout 3 there's a ghoul that you meet who who tells you that he's like 200 years old and that, that they all are i'm sure there's a thing anybody who happens to know more about the fallout war in chat Please feel free to correct me if I'm wrong, but I'm pretty sure that that's the, that's the case, that if the ghouls are actually humans from that. It time. makes total sense because I don't, I, I mean, after being irradiated, you're not going to be able to reproduce, are you? <laughs> For one. And two, you know, radiation, we don't really know what radiation can do to people apart from kill them. But that... Well, it, it just basically destroys all of your DNA, so it makes you stop working. Right. Okay. So, anyway. Um, it's, right. Right, we've got a few more things to talk about before we close the show. We're actually coming up to the two hour. Well, we've passed the two hour limit, which is really weird for us because I thought I thought I didn't think we'd we'd last uh, this long with a, a single subject. Um, okay, we'll do some. We're going to do some questions. We're going to answer some questions in chat. Um, but after, before we do that, I'm just going to briefly go through another game I've been playing recently, which is Fallout Shelter, which you might have seen me do a review of on uh, on YouTube. I did. I put one on this week. Have you guys heard of it or seen it? Or I've heard of it. I've I know about it. Seen it. You are sorry, Sam. I've heard of it. I haven't watched the review yet, but I know the basics of what the game is about. So yeah, it is a it is a very um, uh, it's nothing like Fallout. <laughs> Put it that way. Um, I started playing it when Fallout Four started, even though it's been out since June or July or something uh, this year. It's basically a mobile game, point and click, you know, tap tap to advance kind of game. But, I mean, my review goes into a lot more detail, but um, I've got to a point now where I'm probably a little bit bored of it. I've probably seen everything in the game. But it's not asked me for any money, which I think is good of it, if you know what I mean. It's not, even though it's it apparently made $5.1 million so far uh, in in microtransactions people buying lunch boxes that you can get and people upgrade you know uh speeding rooms up and things like that but it's still there's not that much to it more than uh, more than basically build some rooms manage your vault manage your resources and make sure that your guys don't die that's it essentially but anyway i just wanted to briefly mention it have a look at my review on uh, on our youtube channel if you care mm. the look of it reminds me of um, the new xcom it's gone for the same style layout. 
the new XCOM. Oh, you, you mean know, the bases, you know, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah ant it's farm type. View, isn't it? It's got an ant farm type view. Yeah, yeah. It's it's. I mean, it looks really nice. It's really pretty. And it, it, to be fair, it's been criticised for not having a lot of depth to it. But I do for 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 the kind of game it is. I think it has got quite a lot of depth. You know, you don't just manage resources. You can send people out into the wasteland. You you get raider attacks and deathclaw attacks on your uh, on your vault. Uh, you can upgrade all your rooms in different ways. And it's just it's it basically a resource management game. Um, but as I said, I think I might have I think I might have exceeded what I can get from it now. Um, I'm certainly not spending any money on it. Put it that way. Okay. Okay. I mean, it's, it seems to me like it was done as a marketing thing, like to get some, get a game out, a simple game out that had the Fallout Shit. thing. Going. Sorry about that. I've I've just accidentally dragged things into the wrong. Oh no, no. Oh god. <laughs> 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 Everything, everything went wrong. No there. more drinking for you, Chris. No, no, it, I've, I accidentally... Uh, the new version of XSplit allows you to chain, drag your scenes around, and I accidentally dragged one of my scenes onto the end. Oh, it's all gone wrong. Anyway, so we haven't finished yet. Anyway, so let's uh, answer a few questions in chat. So do you think there is a reason... This is from COTD Broski. Uh, do you think there's a reason why Bethesda took away the karma system? That's interesting, because I haven't Oh, noticed. I can't believe we've not talked about this yet. Um... Now, I've not, I think this is something I've heard various people say that like you, there's more options to do more bad things later in the game, but this also ties into the dialogue, which again I'm quite surprised we've not brought up. Mm. That that feels like that's something that's been streamlined in a negative way. I'm not a massive fan of the karma as it was, but at least it was something. At least it gave you different outcomes to missions you could complete them in different ways. In this game, it seems like you just complete the mission as it was intended for every mission pretty much you can have a few dialogue options and if you say the wrong thing someone might get shot but you can't deliberately be a bastard at, at key junctures it seems not that much i haven't i haven't noticed enough yet because i've only really spoken to settlers and a few of my companions although my companions are like um strong the the super mutant dude gets pissed off every time i get inside my armor my, my power armor doesn't like me getting in the power armor. You're weak. Well, should, you should it. walk around naked like him. And he sits. Oh, I swear to God, if you spend too much time in a settlement managing the settlement, which is what I'm doing basically, he 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 just complains at you. He, he wants to go and kill things constantly, and it's like that's cool. But and yet you keep. I don't know what's going to happen if I keep getting in my power armor because it says um, strong dislike that. So I'm assuming oh. his his like rating is going down as he's doing that this is why i like just the, uh, the horn reaper <laughs> sorry say that again sam i was gonna say this is why i like dog meat because dog meat doesn't say any shit or doesn't <laughs> di like or dislike my actions dog meat's just a dog he, he does he's do he's disliked oh no he's liked some of my actions i can't remember what now really? but he's yeah there's something he liked and i can't remember what it was all right yeah he did a poo in the corner and and then buried it Dog meat likes this. <laughs> you like the way you harvested those melons, Chris. Keep that up. Okay, so we've got another question from CRTD Broski. But to, to actually address his question, oh, sorry. I don't think any of us know why they've done it. The only thing I can, you know, theorise is that it is to streamline the game so that they can build the quests. That, to make the quests, I guess, more linear and story-driven than they would be if it was more open and, like, karma-driven. I don't know why they've done it, but it's definitely... They've taken that entire mechanic out of the game yeah. as far as I can tell apart from the, the companions liking you know, or disliking if you scratch your bollocks on a Tuesday or not like it's not really that much of an investment into the no car. I mean I'm, again I don't really want to lose my companions once I've got them mm -hmm. um, I'm still a bit miffed that you can only take one companion with you anywhere I mean what that isn't realistic at all is it well, the other yeah. option is that they, they, they let you, allow you to take as many companions as you want. You end up with an army walking around with you, which would be also ridiculous. And on Especially top of that, the AI. Just, just, just before we finish talking about companions, fuck off, get out my fucking way. They're still yeah. getting your way every time, every possible juncture of the game. They get in your way. Why can people not write follow companion and follow AI that isn't shit? Why? Can anybody explain that to me? Because it drives me up the wall. It's probably a very hard thing to do when you think about it, to actually get some uh, a character that 
anticipates what you're doing in a human-like way is probably a, a, a almost insurmountable task for a programmer. If, if player is within 20 foot, then move back. Fuck oh, off. What if you can't move back? What if you're already then stuck in a dog? Move, move around and back, or stand still. <laughs> Don't just run in front of me arbitrarily because I'm walking <laughs> through a door. If yeah. player imagine, is in room without what any other... Like if you, if player is in room like without any other companion. exits, then please stand in doorway. No, no. The, where's, why? Why would a programmer ever write that into... <laughs> 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 Can you explain anyway. why the Fallout motto is war, war never changes? Now, I knew this one. I read some trivia on this, but I've forgotten. Sorry. <laughs> that was insightful. Yeah, they, they, Thanks for that, Chris. They, yeah. It's something that comes up every time, isn't it? Because they had, they've had Ron Perlman did it in... Um, I don't know about Fallout 1 and 2, if they even had like voiceover. Uh, Fallout 1 probably didn't, because it's from like 1997, so it probably didn't have full voiceover in it. Maybe it did, I don't know. I haven't played it. Do you know what my I'm... theory is? There's a whole Sorry, speech that's tied to it, though, isn't there? Because the yeah. guy in Fallout 4 has a whole speech, the the, the male character, who it's sort of said was ex-military. Not that that really matters, because you can play as the woman anyway. But I, he's had I a think, speech. I think that the, the model is war, war never changes, is because models, models never change. Yeah, That's and it's a completely meaningless thing because war, it's, of course war completely changes, like travel back in time 500 years and see how war was waged compared to how war is waged now, it's a completely different thing, like 500 years ago you had to go up and stab somebody with a knife face to face now you can just fly a robot with a remote control and drop bombs from fucking a thousand feet in the air, war is completely different, it always Actually, changes It's not physically different, it's... but it's always the same thing between man though, isn't it? But well, yeah, that's why it's called war. If it wasn't the same thing, it wouldn't be called war. It'd be called two right. different things. <laughs> Shoes. Shoes never change. Fundamentally, they don't. War fundamentally doesn't change. That's the point, isn't it? Yeah, but it's, right, it's, guess, it's, uh... it's anachronistic in the way that it's used in the game because the guy says war never changes and yet the war that happened, the Great War, is completely different from all the wars that he'd fought in. He's a soldier who's now just watched a war where there's no fighting, it's just everything explodes. So war has changed. Yeah. Apparently it's a quote from Ulysses Grant. I have never oh, advocated go. war except as a means of peace. So, to, so, so seek peace but prepare for war because war, war never changes. War is like winter and winter is coming. In this case, nuclear winter. <laughs> that's not... That, I think go, that's go, the end of the story. Yeah, I, yeah. I doubt Ulysses S. Grant was dropping nuclear winter hints in his speeches but... Okay. Yeah. <laughs> I'm, I'm sure he can that's, pronounce nuclearly. That's on a forum, so. It's, yeah. So there you go. Apparently, that's where that comes from. It's just become their little motto, isn't it? But that, what, do you know what's weird about that? Is because I remember when Metal Gear Solid 4 comes out and Snake has this whole war. War has changed speech. It's the exact opposite of the Fallout motto. Like, Snake's speech about war is how war is completely different now and how. War is a completely different animal to liquid. what it was even like even when he started being a soldier in his lifetime has completely changed. Liquid also so has a little bit of a war war rant as well, doesn't he? Uh, as Brother, as, we must uh, have war, but the right kind of war or something. As long as there are people there will, there will always be war. Lots of let, this. let me answer Brother Sorry. Let me answer, um, COTD Broski has asked another question. Is there a reason why you are left in your chamber pod by the mysterious figures? Yes, because if they didn't leave you in the pod, there wouldn't be a game. Yeah, plot. Which, well, hang on, are they talking about the Fallout 4 <laughs> chamber pod thing? This is the anthropic yeah, principle yeah. of gaming. You have to be alive to experience the game. Yeah, yeah, we're, we're not like, we're, we're only like 20 or so hours into the game, and I think we've said... We've not really done that much of the story yet, so as to the... I don't I don't have no idea where my baby is right now. I haven't even started looking for the little fucker. Because I've got <laughs> better things to do. <laughs> you like killing death It'll claws. Fine. It'll be fine. He's whatever. He's got to stand that he's on two feet. I haven't played any of the main story yet either myself, but my assumption uh, why you're left is because after a certain... Well, that we know, after coming out of the pod and reading the Overseer's terminals and some other terminals and documentation around the vault, that people, the people who were administrating the vault were sent off 
after a certain what? period, after the bomb dropped, uh, was it 30 days or something? Were they told they had to leave the vault yeah. after 30 days or something like that? So after that period, like that, they yeah. were just, we, you, you were just left to rot, essentially, or you were just left to be in cryostasis for however long it was meant to well, be. Well, no, because you come out and you find out that there's been like a bit of a, a mutiny in there and that there's, the guy wouldn't let anyone out. Yes, but I'm saying that they were sent off, but after a certain period, they all went. Or there was a, there was a mutiny. They all went into skeletons. Yes. Um, but... You don't know. We don't know how long it is after you were rich and originally frozen that these people come along. Now it looks like a raider and some kind of scientist that picks picks him up. Yeah. So yeah. that you'd assume that the raider is is has been evo has evolved as a raider after God knows how many years of you being in this vault. So it could be a hundred years. It could be fifty. It could be ten minutes. You don't know. But it's likely to be fifty, hundred years, or whatever, hundred and fifty years afterwards. So by that point, Vault Tech and everything related to it, and the vault and the administration will be dissipated. You, they probably don't even know that you're his father or that you're alive because everybody else in all the other pods are all dead. So they're probably just it's an oversight, isn't it? They just don't think that you're alive, and the. They said, oh, look, there's a, a live woman in here with a baby. And we want a baby. There's got to be... A, obviously, they want a baby for something. Your I've son can't weird, be special. I've got a weird theory that... You know how there's talk about these, like, synths that can be like humans? I've got a weird theory that you might not even be that same person. You might be a synth with their, like, oh, memories. The Blade Runner thing. There's a, there's a big, like, synth there is. current. I can already tell that to the story and the whole who the hell is a synth and who isn't. Yeah, that, um, I've, I've started. I've to got loads that of I've got loads of theories. I've got a theory about your um, your husband slash wife, who spoiler gets killed when your baby gets kidnapped. That's so putting my hands up for spoilers. Within, uh, 15 I reckon. Minutes. I reckon. I reckon you might come across them uh, again. That might not be a real thing either. See. Howling Mad Dogs also just said, "I thought from all the fallouts at the vaults were experiments and op and they were opened after certain time periods to see if they things worked out." Yes and no. Some of the yes. vaults were well, so they were all experiments in some way, shape, or form, and we we already know that Vault Tech were duping people into going into vaults. This one in particular was a uh, the one Vault One Hundred One was about how long could someone last in cryostasis, whereas was it Vault? One, no, sorry, this is Vault 111, isn't it, in Fallout 4? Yeah, it is. Was, yeah, was yeah. it 101, 101 in Fallout 3? 101 was in Fallout yeah. 3, yeah. So 101 in Fallout 3, it seemed fairly... I can't even remember. What, I don't think there was anything weird about that, apart from it just broke down. I think it, people were living there fine. But there was also... There was another vault that I went into in Fallout 3 where um, everybody was stuck in a, a kind of a a matrix style pod and they're all yeah, put I into a, and I don't know if that was in the main story or a side quest but that was really cool because you went into this world and somebody in that in one of the pods or with it or an AI in the game I can't remember I think it might have been an AI within the actual virtual world they were in they, they kind of went rogue and took over the the perfect world mm. didn't they it was a little kid it was a little kid uh, yeah, it was they, I think it was a person who's given themselves a little kid avatar in yeah. the game the same game in the virtual reality thing and it kept everyone else a prisoner there um yeah that was cool i think that was a side i don't think that was part of the main quest that was, that was there really was also cool. there was also another vault where this guy had closed himself and you had a vault full of gary's running around who thought <laughs> every, you know like uh, you know like papa lazaru calls everyone dead they were caught they were going around going is that you gary yeah and then when they found you they were like here you are gary they try and kill you with baseball bats and stuff um <laughs> so uh, there's, all that, to... there's always crazy stuff in vaults right so last question before we close the show i think I i'm gonna i'm gonna ask you guys a question have you been to any other vaults in fallout 4 yet yes now there is for there's vault 86 that i've uh, come across or I've, I've had highlighted on my map but i haven't been to it yet but i um, haven't yet I've and in, I think it was Vault 114. And that might have been one of the few sort of tied to finding my baby missions that I've done. Oh, right. Uh, which I tried to find this detective bloke who was, who was in there. So I got in there through a subway and some raid. Well, some raiders were breaking into it. That's all I'll say about that. But yeah, I found one vault that was basically um, pretty simple. wasn't very big one. Because some of the vaults are massive and some of them are tiny, aren't they? Well, or the, you, I you can so. get access. You can get access to vaults that are big i'm guessing they're all probably a similar size but you only have access to certain amounts of them because they've yeah. got locked off doors or there's been a cave in somewhere or something so i've come yeah. across one but there's, 
there's always a few weird vaults. I'm looking forward to finding more weird vaults. I said I, I came across somebody who I can't remember where. I think it was near um, Sunshine Trading Co., which is one of the settlements. Um, as I was going towards it, this guy was just fighting some rad scorpion or something. And then after the fight, he said to me, "Oh, I'm just going. I'm, uh, you should go and check out Vault 86. Um, I'm going to loot it for stuff." And I was like, "Right." It's a bit weird telling me about it if you're going to loot it, but all right. <laughs> so I, I've got that with that. I've, I said I haven't, I haven't been there yet. Um, do you guys know if they've linked in the first game's vault into this game? Now, which first game? Are you talking about Fallout, the original Fallout? Because I haven't played that. I, I don't know um, where the first game was set because Fallout 3 but, was in uh, Washington. New Vegas was obviously in Las Vegas. I don't was, know where Fallout 1 and 2 was, was set. I've, one of them's got to be New York. One was California. California. Yeah. Yeah. I'm just trying to fucking say that. What one was in California, and you oh. uh, that you were sent out to get a water chip um, to bring back to the vault. But it was an isometric game, so it was very, very and turn based as well. Turn based combat. I really want. I've got them. I got them from GOG ages ago. Um, I've got one and two, and I keep meaning to play them. But it's just one of those it's, games that you never get around to having a go at. Is two set in California as well? I don't think so. I think that's set somewhere else. I can't remember. But anyway. Right, so it's been a wonderful show tonight, tonight and it's been great to have uh, everybody's uh, participation in chat. I'm, uh, I'm very thankful to you guys. Uh, if you are interested in anything we do, please subscribe, please uh, like us, please do everything you, you want and uh, come and join us most Wednesdays whenever we we decide to do a stream. We're thinking of changing the format up a little bit. Normally we do a very different type of show to this, but um, we're, we're considering our options at the moment. Um, but yeah, subscribe on YouTube, because this will be up there without the dropped frames. I'm afraid there's been quite a few dropped frames over the last uh, 10, 20 minutes. And maybe without the technical faults, but I don't know if I'll be able to get around that. We shall see. But thank you, and I'm sure Lou and Sam say thank you too. We do. Thank you. Cheers. Thank you very much. It's been a good show. See you next time. It has. Catch you later, guys. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.